Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Recording webinar session. Recording in progress. On uh, action research. So once again, binabati po namin ang bawat mga participant for this event, Action Research. And I'm Virgo Clemente Lopez, the Quality Improvement and uh, Training Director of the Center for Lifelong uh, Learning. And of course, the Dean of the School of Education and Arts at Pan Pacific University. And we would like again to greet everyone. Please type in the chat box where you are coming from. I'm live here in Hilton San Valley Resort here in Clark, Pampanga. May we know our students, where are you coming from? Uh, this time, may we see a heart sign from our students, education students coming from the Central Philippine University in Iloilo. Sige nga po, uh, patingin po ng thumbs up or rather heart sign from these students from CPU. Magandang araw po sa inyo. All right, and also we would like to greet our students, Pan Pacifics, from the Pan Pacific University in Ordaneta, Pangasinan, our education students. Thank you for joining. And uh, there are also students or participants coming from Sambuanga, Sibugay in Mindanao. All right, so we're now 80 via Zoom. And we would like to remind everyone for some webinar netiquettes, CBS advice. First, all right, can we mute po sa ating mga uh, nagjo-join na mga participant? Please ensure that you are muted. Thank you. And we would like to remind you to ensure a stable internet connection for you to be able to enjoy and stay with us for the rest of the webinar until 12 today. And please utilize the chat box for your comments or for your questions because the Q&A button is disabled this time. And please observe other webinar netiquette. And this time we would like to read or we would like you to rename accordingly. So please have your school, for example, Pan Pacific U uh, underscore and then your full name. Can we have that? Or CPU underscore your full name. Your, your school first and then your full name for you to be properly acknowledged later on. We would like to acknowledge then the CPU-led course facilitator, Ms. Joanne Ivan Abelio. Good morning, ma'am. And also, and then the Dean, Dr. Merle Hunsai. If the Dean is around, magandang araw po sa inyo. All right, how about our students coming from Pan Pacific? May we see a uh, thumbs up from you? just to ascertain that you are already here. Some of the faculty of Pan Pacific University are joining as well. Salamat po. Okay, so without much ado, let's put ourselves in the holy presence of the Lord as we formally start our program with this CBRC Ecumenical Prayer. Let us feel the presence of our Almighty Creator, through the gift of life that we continue to enjoy. Through the past, present, and the future that makes life wonderful. Heavenly God, we praise your omnipotence, we trust your omnipresence, and we believe in your loving heart. Grant that our hearts be filled with love, our heads be nurtured with wisdom, and our hands be molded to care as we journey through this life. May your blessing be showered upon our lives so that we may fulfill our mission to serve our life purpose and so we may achieve our vision of becoming close to you. Make me an instrument of your love, a messenger of your peace, a steward of your creations, and a gift to humanity. Grant our wishes so that through them we become more equipped to serve you and others. Guide us, be with us, Enlighten our minds, touch our hearts, and guide our hands. Bless our loved ones, our families, our world. All these we ask through our loving Creator. In the silence of our hearts, let us pray for our personal intentions. Amen. Let's now direct our attention for the canned Philippine National Anthem. Oh, young Logie, 
Liu, those who just join in, magandang araw po, good morning. May we ask everyone to turn on your respective camera as we would like to, to see that you are with us, though virtually you are there. Come on, let's all turn on our camera and we're joined in by our speaker already this morning. Good morning, Dr. Villanueva, who would be properly introduced in a while. All right, I'm seeing Miss Habonete. We have here CBRC Iligan, Miss Bernabeth. Elis Elisada, Nika Joy. We have also from CBRC Zamboanga, Kmar, Jean, Jana, Palagdao. We have from CPU, we have Al Filin. Nice name. Zaira as well is here. Can we go to the other panel? Um, okay, so those are the only ones with their videos on. So we would like the others to please turn on your camera. We have here Jerica Basco, so in her uniform from Pan Pacific. Good morning. We have someone from UC Baguio and uh, uh, there. So uh, quickly, may we hear just a message coming from our CPU-led course facilitator for initiating and of course, for collaborating with the Center for Lifelong Learning here at CBRC and the Maestra Professional Journal. Good morning, Ms. Joanne Abelio. May we hear some words from you, ma'am? Good morning everyone and hello greetings from Iloilo City and from Central Philippine University. We are very happy that this collaboration has um, has successfully been um, implemented now and we know that CBRC is really uh, into helping our and mentoring our future educators. So we're very thankful Dr. Lopez for uh, immediately responding to our request. And I'm also very glad that you also opened the doors of this uh, a seminar to all the other um, universities as well. I think this is uh, the linkages that we really wanted because we are preparing our future teachers to be researchers in the field. So we're very happy that uh, this is a start. This is a start, I believe that we will continually be partners in mentoring our students. So thank you very much. And Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Joanne. And Merry Christmas and Happy 2022. We have 11 days to go before Christmas and barely 18 days before the new year. All right. So let's now get started with a few questions. I would like the students to respond via chat box, whether it is a yes, a no, or a maybe, all right? So as I give a statement about research, I would like you to respond with this quick survey and for us to see um, really what's the fact about it. Number one, research is easy. Come on, chat box, please. Madali lamang po ang pananaliksik. Come on, everyone. I would like to read your answers. Is it a yes? No or a maybe? Okay, the first answer I, I read here is no, no, no. I'm still hopeful that someone would say yes, but I think it's really a no. All right, so yes, it may be difficult, but there's a way to, you know, to be competent with this field or academic endeavor. Next question or next statement. Research would help you develop critical thinking. Let me say that again. Research would develop or help you develop Critical thinking. And I'm saying yes this time. Wala bang maybe, all right? Or dipindi? 
depende kay Duterte, you know, kidding aside, uh, it's up to you on how you see it. But at the end of the day, research with the process indeed help us to be organized and for us to, to analyze things or even synthesize, right? Next statement, there is money in research. Meanwhile, may we ask our participants to stay muted, please? You are given the freedom to actually unmute, but for us to have a better and smooth program, please stay muted, not unless you are instructed to do otherwise or you have to recite later on in the engagement. Salamat po. So let me go back. There is money in research. Oh, may Tagalog, baka, kalabaw, kabayo, ba? Maybe it says here. And let me tell you now, as a practitioner and as a researcher, and I think our speaker later on would agree, there's indeed money in research. Now, another point. Research would help you continue to develop with your professional growth and development. Mahalaga po ba ang research even after graduating or even passing the licensure examination for teachers? Definitely. Because CPD units, you could get units from research and innovation. And in order for you to do that, it's not just to attend webinars. Indeed, for you or otherwise for you to actually develop the research competencies. So without much ado, this is a two-day webinar session. There will be engagements, and then you're expected to participate in some of the Q&A. And who knows, there might be a breakout session tomorrow for a quick uh, critiquing of your possible research topic, especially on classroom-based action research. So without much ado, may we now introduce the speaker for this event. Our speaker, Dr. Wilmar M. Villanueva is the current education program specialist in mathematics at the Department of Education Schools Division of Quirino. Likewise, he is an outstanding employee awardee with various research studies conducted, there are a lot for me to mention, and several innovations initiated in the Department of Education. He is an author of different research references. He rose from the ranks from teacher one and now to an education program specialist or supervisor. And he's the former EPS for human resource section and also planning and research section. He is also a member or one of the members of the Maestra Professional Journal Board of Reviewers. Ladies and gentlemen, without much ado, it's my pleasure to introduce to you um, the researcher enthusiast from DepEd Quirino, Dr. Wilmar. M. Villanueva. Naimbag nga bigat, Dr. Wilmar? Wilmar? Good morning, everyone. Napapakinggan ba ako, Sir Virgo? Yes, po. loud and clear, sir. Okay. Thank you very much, po. Uh, what, uh, first and foremost, I'd like to express my thanks and gratitude po to CBRC family for once again inviting me to this uh, webinar engagement with our future educators. Actually, nanginginig pa rin ako, Sir Virgo, kasi eh, um, kung CBRC ang pag-uusapan, tatak ng yan, right? I learned in the previous result of the licensure examination for teachers that the top one bought from elementary and secondary level came from uh, yung mga nag-review coming from the CBRC. And um, parang yung top one natin from secondary level, from Intilagan Isabela, siguro na-meet natin siya before in Rojas, way back 2020. Right. Kasi sila yung kwan, sila yung uh, naputol yung kanilang pag-e-exam. And I do believe also that uh, someday, somehow, our top notchers will came from this group of people who will... Uh, be enlightened also about what is really an action research. Okay, so I guess we have uh, varied participants coming from different uh, provinces. Hindi lang po siya from Iloilo. I guess mayroon pong Pampanga. And uh, once again, naimbag na bigat tayo amin, uh, friends. Uh, that is an iloco term, iloco greetings of good morning, everyone. Okay, may I share my slide? Sir Virgo? 
being seen, sir. Okay na? Yes po. Uh, okay. okay. Yes, Before I will proceed to my to my discussion, allow me first to uh, to share with you my milestone in the world of research. Ito ay ginamit ko din during my encounter at Rojas, Isabela. And I hope na ito ay maka-encourage po sa ating mga viewers, especially yung ating mga future educators. So once again, I am Wilmar M. Villanueva, the present education program supervisor in mathematics of the school's division of Quirino. Okay. Yung mga tanong kanina ni Sir Virgo, tama po yun. May sumagot ng no, may sumagot ng yes. Then, tanong din niya kanina, may pera ba sa research? Later on, masasagot natin yan. Okay, when you will be hired at the Department of Education, uh, you will know uh, yung mga kasagutan ng mga tanong sa Virgo kanina. Okay? So, bale, after my graduation at Philippine Normal University, I started my teaching career way back in 2005 as a local school board teacher. Kasi yun, during that time, pahirapan po ang item. So ito po yung ine-enculcate natin sa ating mga participants na kapag nakatapos po tayo ng, ng ating education or nakapag-graduate po tayo, it's not a guarantee. Or kahit nakapasa na tayo, it's not a guarantee na makukuha na po tayo agad sa government. So, marami ka pang pagdadaan ng proseso bago ka maka-in or finally ma-absorb as a permanent teacher. So, way back 2005, when we start yung ating karera as a local school board teacher, then naku nakakuha lang ako ng ating item in 2008. Okay. Then, I will encourage also our our viewers, our participants this morning, that after you finish your education, and diretso na kayo sa pagkuhan nyo ng masteral. I know CBRC through, ano yung kwan natin, connect, connection natin, Sir Virgo, na school? Sorry, yung sorry. sa kwan, sa dagupan ba yun? Uh, in Ordineta po? Oo. Oo. The Pan Pacific University okay, is it? Yun. Yung Pan Pacific, Pan Pacific University, pwede kayong magtuloy-tuloy dyan. Nandiyan si Sir Virgo to, to help you para sa inyong masteral. So after after I got the position of teacher one in 2008, natapos ko na rin noon ang aking masteral. So eventually, I submitted my requirement for the classification, then promoted to teacher three in 2010. Then, here comes an opportunity at the school's division of Quirino when the rationalization plan opened. Uh, I was hired as the education program specialist too in the human resource development section in 2015. Then, another opportunity comes in 2017 uh, when I got the position as the senior education program specialist in the planning and research section in 2017. And lastly, late, lately lang po, uh, nung nagkaroon ulit ng opportunity po sa Curriculum Implementation Division, nag-retire po yung aming supervisor in mathematics in 2020. Then, nakuha ko with the grace of the Lord yung position as the Education Program Specialist. Pero, yung venture ko na yan ng 2005 up to 2020, um, sabihin ko po sa inyo, Marami, maraming research ang naganap dyan. Kasi pag nandyan, nandito ka sa DepEd, research ang pwedeng makapagkwan, makapagkakilala sa'yo. Later on, I will discuss with you some of my research when I was a classroom teacher and during my time now as a supervisor. Okay.
Okay. So I will be discussing now on what are the basic and consideration in conducting action research for teachers and students. So I will name my topic as building an epistemic community. So before I will proceed, um, represent ko lang po sa inyo ang aking project sa SDO Quirino during my term as a Senior Education Program Specialist. I have this project based star before uh, or bringing schools transformation through active research engagement. We have 2,000, more than 2,000 human resources in SDO Quirino. And during my time, nagkaroon ako ng different uh, learning and development programs for various group of people. We have the project race. Uh, this is intended for school heads in doing applied research. We have this project, empty car, empty, or the mobile training for collaborative action research for master teachers. Uh, we know that soon, kapag maging master teacher kayo, uh, magbabago yung konsepto nyo ng action research. Mayroon tayo yung pang-proficient teachers at mayroon po tayo yung tinatawag nating highly proficient teachers. Ang proficient teachers are those teachers from teacher 1 to 3 and highly proficient teachers are those uh, master teacher 1 to master teacher 3. Okay, then we have also the project high care. Ito po yung ating mga pang-proficient teachers. Itong project alert high five, we have this project or this learning and development for uh, ALS teachers. So, yung mga teachers teachers din po natin ngayon or yung mga future teachers, um, pwedeng ang direction na pupunta natin ay pwedeng ma-hire po tayo as um, ALS teacher later. And we have this project trips or the training for research and innovation for private schools. And in SDO Quirino, hindi lang po namin pinapakialaman yung mga human resource namin in the public. But of course, we care for our teachers in the private schools kasi soon magde-decide din po yan na pupunta po sila sa ating sa government then of course uh, we offer also the friday friday research habit for our non-teaching personnel yung mga nandito po sa SDO base so every friday nagkakanda kami ng one-on-one uh, -on -one consultation with our employees to come up with their research and Itong Project B star po namin during, uh, in the year 2019, harvested around 500 uh, research from, um, uh, from the different training programs provided for our learners. And one, of, and one of the output of this Project B star, eh, gusto kong sabihin kay Sir Virgo na yung nanalo noon during the first conference of Maestra in the person of Elaine Gonzalez and Mamruena Felipe, who garnered third place, are the product of Project Beastar. Okay. So, my discussion this morning have the following objectives. First, I will define what is an action research. Uh, know the different parts of an action research. I know in the, in the undergrad, you have your template, but when you when you will be hired in the Department of Education, of course, uh, you will follow what will be the template of the Department of Education. Para, kasi yun naman yung direction natin eh. Pupunta kayo sa Department of Education. So, from now on, kailangan malaman na natin kung ano yung mga parts ng action research. Uh, identify areas where we can obtain topics for action research. Um, even in this time of pandemic or we are now moving into, into the face-to-face. -face. So, kailangan din natin alamin kung saan natin pwedeng kunin yung mga areas for action research. And it's, of course, discuss the consideration so that action research when undertaken will be funded by BERF. Ito yung sinasabi ni Sir Virgo na pwede kang magkaroon ng pera sa paggawa ng action research kapag nasa DepEd ka na. Kasi popundahan yan kung ano yung Ano yung magagasto mo doon sa gagawin mong research? Bibigyan ka ni DepEd ng pera para pang-support doon sa na-conceptualize yung project. And of course, I will share with you later the sample action research using the simplified and guided template. Dito kasi sa SDO Quirino, 
uh, minadali namin yung paggawa ng action research noon. Tinulungan namin yung mga yung mga teachers po namin. Kaya napansin nyo, ganun, ganun ka bilis yung pag-akyat ng uh, ng mga output po namin kasi meron na silang sinusunod na template. Okay? Oh, Sir Virgo, may we ask from our participants, are our participants ready now for action research? Okay. And gusto ko, and during my discussion, um, kwan tayo, ah, palitan tayo ng idea. Hindi lang ako yung nagsasalita. Uh, anytime, I will call names from our participants to give their ideas kung ano yung mga tatanungin ko. Okay. So, siguro, sa iba, tatan, sasagot nila, yes. Pero sa iba siguro, ang sasagot nila, not yet. Okay. May I ask this one? Have you ever been in a forest? Sir Virgo, pumunta ka na ba sa forest? Yes po, pero matagal na, Mr. Willmar, kasi palaging sa city. Okay. But I've been there. Okay. When was the last time? Uh, probably three years ago. Okay. How about our dear participants? Sir Virgo, pwedeng ikaw na lang magtawag. Right. Para makita natin kung talagang nakikinig sila sa atin. Yes po, I will be calling then. Mr. Pavo Nico from Pan Pacific University, please respond. Nico, are you there? Or probably you can type in the chat box your answer to this question flashed on the screen. Have you ever been in a forest? Come on, everyone. Okay. Again. Some answered yes. Uh, Ma'am Benny answered no. Okay, yes. That's it. Yes. Siguro yung mga sumagot ng no, nandun sila sa city. Ano? Okay. Next question. Alone? O, oh, Sir Virgo, nung pumunta ka ba sa forest, are you alone? No po. I have to be with the, with the group because nakatakot pong mag-isa. <laughs> okay. Oh, so, with a companion, right? Okay. How about this next question? Have you ever been trapped in a... in a place like an elevator? O, oh, siguro yung mga sumagot kanina ng no, nandun sila sa city, so... Lagi sila sa SM, sa Robinson, may elevator doon. Pero have you ever uh, tried drop in a place like an elevator? Sir Virgo, ikaw, na-try mo na bang na trap sa elevator? Um, luckily, hindi pa na. I mean, luckily, hindi pa naman po. Hindi pa. Okay, how about the other participant? Yes, sa CR. O ito, yes, 20 minutes. Si CPU Estremera. Okay, tanungin natin si Ma'am CPU at saka yung mga nag-yes. Sa CR daw, pero sa CR yung iba. Yung iba sa elevator. Okay. Is it exciting? Okay. Mr. I mean, Estremera, Patricia, can you unmute and respond from CPU? Go ahead, ma'am. Mahihain itong ating mga participants, Dr. Villanueva. Ako nga nahihiya eh. Kasi uh, pag may... sinabi natin si CDRC, tatak na yung yan, di ba? Ayan po. Meron po tayong faculty from Pan Pacific University. We have you from CBRC as well, tatak CBRC. So, Mr. Frederick Villanueva, please expound your answer. Oh, I found my cousin, Sir Virgo. <laughs> ah, yeah. Hello. Hello po. Good morning. Um, yes, po. I I tried po um trap in an elevator po when I was in university University of Baguio po. Actually, punuan kami during that time. Siguro um maximum of six members lang and nine kami dun sa loob ng elevator and na trap. All mixed emotions siya nun eh. Like um may halong ka ba and excitement. Pero alam mo yung excitement yung feeling ko <laughs> kasi. Um, hindi hindi ko alam kung um, yung sa mga movies na napapanood ko ay mangyayari ba doon, yung biglang baba ba, <laughs> mga gano'n. So, ewan ko, it's so like a weird feeling na dapat ba akong kabahan or excited, pero I feel much more excited doon sa mga susunod pang mangyayari doon sa na-trap kami elevator. It's like 30 minutes kami doon sa loob eh. Ayun, okay. it's gabi po yun eh. 
so exciting kasi pero kung mag-isa ka doon siguro natakot ka right <laughs> opo <laughs> pero exciting kasi marami kayo syempre nagtatawanan pa kayo okay next If not, what? Yan na yung question. Okay, how about this one? Have you ever been in a hotel? Yes po, Dr. Wilmar. We are currently in a hotel now with the faculty of Pan Pacific University. Yan, okay, si Mr. Okay. Frederick is with me. Ah, Sir <laughs> Frederick. Okay. Question? Sir Virgo and Sir Frederick, is that a five-star hotel? Yes. Hilton San Valley Hotel here, here in Clark, Pampanga po. Bong, ganyo naman. <laughs> uh, pero Salamat. yung, yung iba siguro, four-star hotel, three-star hotel, some no. is no-star hotel. Never mind the number of stars, right? What is important is you enjoy this danger. Okay. Let me tickle your mind this time. Do you know of a widower? How about a man whose wife is working abroad? Do you know of a female teacher, a friend, or an enemy that lives away from her husband? Oh, yes daw, sabi ni Frederick. Marites po. <laughs> Oops, oh, maraming marites ngayon. Siyempre, Hi, sir. ang pagiging researcher, pagig, magpagiging marites din minsan, right? Uh, tignan natin. How about unintentionally witnessing these two people secretly coming out from the hotel this day? O yan, lalabas na yung mga marites. Okay, what will be your reaction? What will you do after that circumstances? Uh, magkanungan tayo, Sir Virgo, aside, aside sa, okay. one, sa newfound insan ko. Yeah, uh, Mr. Rodlan, I think you're here. Uh, Mr. Rodlan is a faculty English teacher. Mr. Rodlan, probably you can share. Mr. Rodlan, kanjan ba siya, Mr. Derek? Ayan, go. Hello, po. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. After that circumstance, what did I do? After mm-hmm. witnessing people going out of a hotel, am I right, sir? Yes. Or probably the first thing that I could probably think of would be the enjoyment or the happiness that the people felt after they stayed in that particular hotel. <laughs> oh, sino pa? Sino pa? Sir Virgo? Uh, here, Mr. P- a student, Mr. Pavo. Or you can vol- volunteer by raising your virtual hand. This time, may we have Mr. Nico Pavo here. Math, math. It's student, uh, Dr. Wilmar, BS Math. Wow. Hi, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Nico, your response. I, can you please repeat, sir, your question? <laughs> Dr. Wilmar. Um, after that circumstance, uh, anong gagawin mo? Kung nakita mo yung ano yun? Uh, you witnessed two people secretly coming out from the hotel you stayed. <laughs> mm, <maisang sagot. laughs> Wala idea, sir. Speechless po siya. <laughs> Wala siyang idea. Kasi ang gagawin niya, magtatago rin siya. <laughs> right? <laughs> kasi ayaw din niyang makita. Bakit? Bakit ayaw niyang makita siya ng kakilala niya? Siyempre, may pinatago din siya doon sa hotel. Siguro hmm. yan ano. Okay, so uh, papasok na dyan ngayon minsan yung pagiging marites natin. Pero nag-e-start na dyan yung pagre-research natin. Bakit kaya nandun yung kapitbahay namin? Tapos yung co-teacher ko nandun. Eh, yung asawa niya nandun sa abroad. O, nag-e-start ka ng mag-research. Nag-e-start ng magtanong yung isip mo. Okay? When Okay, where can we do? Where can we gather our research now? Okay. Ito lang yung tatlong tandaan po natin, mga kapatid. ROE, based from your readings, based from your observation, and based from, from your experience. 
Okay, tatlo yan. Mag, mag, magsasama yan when we do action research. Later on, I will share with you uh, some of my action research that I have conducted way back when I was a classroom teacher. Uh, titignan natin kung tama ba yung sinabi ni Sir Wilmar na base sa kanyang readings, base sa kanyang observation, at base sa kanyang experience. Pag halu-haluin natin yung tatlo na yan, makakagawa tayo later ng isang magandang action research. Okay. And... Balik ako dun sa first slide ko kanina para i-share ko sa inyo yung experience ko ng paggawa ng action research. Okay. So in year 2005, gaya ng sinabi ko sa inyo kanina, yun yung first time ko na magman ma-hire sa education sa DepEd pero as a local school board yung sweldo ko galing sa probinsya. So, during that time, sige, uh, gumawa ako ng mga strategies, mga paraan kung paano ko mapapataas yung performance ng aking mga estudyante, especially along mathematics. Okay. Nung 2010, 2011, 2011, 2012, 2012, 2012, 2013, yan yung mga time kung saan dyan ko Tinugot yung performance ng ating mga estudyante sa mathematics. We have 32.79, 32.02, and 39.85, I think. Um, yan yung MPS namin sa National Achievement Test. Okay, so saan galing ito? Based sa ROE na sinasabi ko. So pwedeng ito ay based from my readings kasi galing siya sa bulletin from the division office. Okay. And during this time, 2010 to 2013, teacher na rin ako sa school. So, I guess marami na rin akong mga experience. May mga observations na rin ako sa aking mga estudyante before. Okay. Anxiety as defined by Arthur Summers Roth is a stream of fear trickling through mind when courage it cuts a channel into which all other thoughts are drained. Hence, Anxiety towards math-related activities might affect one's ability to deal with varied situation, ordinary, as well as academic life. So yan, nabasa ko. Math anxiety ang reason kung bakit mababa yung performance ng aking, ng aking mga estudyante before. So that is based on my readings. Another. When, during, during my encounter with my students, I observed na medyo pala gustong naglalaro ng aking mga estudyante. So that is based on my observation. Yun yung parang lagi nilang ginagawa. Then may nabasa ako na game-based learning is a type of gameplay that has defined learning outcomes. It generates and designed to balance subject matter with gameplay and the ability of the player to retain and apply said subject matter to the real world. Sabi ko sa sarili ko noon, paano kaya kung i-integrate ko ang game-based approach dun sa aking pagtuturo? Since na-observe ko na yung interest ng ating mga estudyante ay paglalaro. Okay. Then, I have this uh, try-out na sa mga estudyante ko before. Do you know of, do you know this game? Ano nang game ito? Domino. Okay, yes. Ano kaya kung gamitin ko itong domino, domino para doon sa intervention ko para ma makuha ng mga estudyante ko kung ano yung lesson namin today? And during that time, mababa yung performance sa aking mga estudyante along sa competency ng converting radians to degrees and degrees to radians. Okay. So, kung mapapansin nyo, itong domino na ito, ginamit ko siya as an intervention to understand lesson in that particular competency. So, instead of using this one, um, eh, yung domino natin, yung tile po natin, hinati ko siya sa dalawa in such a way na yung isang isang part niya sa upper part will be a degree and the lower part will be the region. Then, kung ano yung proseso ng paglalaro dun sa domino, 
ganun din yung proseso diyan Kailangan i-connect mo yung tile na uh, yung equivalent ng 90 degrees. So yung mga math teachers po natin dito, pwede nyo gamitin yan later. Pero as I discover, pwede rin natin gamitin ito sa mga English, sa science, sa araling panlipunan, and other subjects. O paano? Example, ang subject mo is yung eight parts of speech. O maglagay ka ng noun. Tapos sa other, other side niya is mga word. Then i-connect nila verb, something pronoun, something ganun. So sa chemistry din pwede yung table of elements. Sa araling panlipunan, especially in elementary, kung may mga elementary teachers po natin, pwede rin natin gamitin ito later. Yung sa taas, mga rehyon, sa baba, mga lalawigan. Para at least maalala ng ating mga estudyante kahit hindi na sila mag-scan. Okay. Hindi mo na pro-problemahin later. Okay. So, ito yung first na ginawa ko noon during my time as a teacher at Victoria High School. Uh, Dora the Game and Improved Performance in Converting Degrees to Region and Vice Versa of Fortier Students of Victoria High School. So, later on, makikita nyo na ngayon dito kung paano mag-conceptualize ng title. So, yung mga binibigay kong title. Pero later, ituturo ko pa rin kung paano siya gagawin. Okay. Next, I have this project, TRIO, o Teach Arithmetic in One-on-One -on -one Approach. Okay. One-on-one -on -one instruction ensures the students interacts with the teacher individually so that each can learn and understand concepts at their own pace and in their own way. So yan, nabasa ko ulit yan based on my reading. Ngayon, observation ko sa ating mga estudyante, parang mas nagugustuhan nilang makikonect sa kanilang mga peers. So ang ginawa ko noon during that time, way back 2013, mayroon akong tatlong section na hawak uh, for cheer with same number of students, 40, 40, 40. So ang ginawa ko ngayon dyan is and yung students from section A, pinair ko siya sa section B and section C in such a way na magkaroon ako ng trio or tatlong estudyante in one group. Wherein these students will meet uh, at a particular time, example, 12.30 to 1. Kasi, siyempre, maglalans pa naman sila ng 12 to 12.30. So, 12.30 to 1. Tapos, they will discuss kung ano yung naging topic namin, previous topic. Then, kinabukasan noon, magkakaroon ako ng formative assessment with them. Okay, siyempre, yung mga estudyante natin, kung ano yung sasabihin teacher, maniniwala yan. O, sige, magpapa-exam ako sa inyo, five, based on your, on, on your activity kanina. O, i record ko yan. O, syempre, maniniwala yung mga estudyante. Kung ano yung score ng isa, score ng pangalawa, score ng pangatlong estudyante, i-average ko yan, yun yung score nilang tatlo. So, what will be the impact of this? Or ano yung magiging, anong gagawin ng mga estudyante? So, kailangan nilang mag-meet every time, 12.30, then 4.30, bago sila uuwi. Ngayon, ang isang tanong, Sir, paano yung, yung kasama namin, yung naipere sa amin, laging uma-absent? Oh, that's not my problem. It's up to you to encourage na papasok. So, na-addressan ko ulit yung isang problem ko, yung absentism. At ang nakatulong doon, yung kanilang peer. Kasi, si for example, yung isang estudyante doon sa five items na kuha ng five, tapos absent yung isa, absent yung pangalawa, isa lang niya, five divided by three yung score. So, pipilitin ngayon ni estudyante na, uy, pumasok ka, malilintikan yung grade namin dito kung hindi ka papasok. O kung pumasok man siya, kailangan niyang i-support o kailangan niyang i-tutor si learner, yung kasama niya. Then later on, nagkakaroon na ng interest yung batang papasok at nagkakaroon na rin ng interest doon sa lesson. Okay. Okay. I have this another project. Yung Project Boys or Venturing Opportunities to Improve Competencies and Excellence Among Second-Year Students in Victoria High School Through Individualized Exercises. Uh, ito na naman yung nabasa ko noon. Individualized learning or individualized instruction is a method of teaching in which content, instructional technology, and pace of learning are based upon the abilities and interests of its learner. That is based on my reading. 
Ang observation ko, kapag nagpaparecite ako sa aking mga estudyante, parang monotonous lang siya. Iisa lang yung nagre-recite kung sino lang yung nag-interest sa math. Yung iba, walang pakialam. So, yan yung observation ko. And that was my experience oh, throughout the years when I started my career as a teacher. Ngayon, paano ko kaya i-address yung problem na yon Sabi ko, kasi may problema ka, dapat ikaw din na teacher ang gagawa ng solution ng problema mo. So, what if kaya ang gagawin ko, mag-individualized exercises ako? Medyo kan siya, medyo toxic siyang gawin kasi if you have 40 students in the class, kailangan mong mag-craft ng mga individualized exercises na 40. Pero maganda rin yan kasi if you have three section, yung 40 na yun, magagamit mo na siya sa three section. So alam nyo ang pinalabasan to, Alam nyo yung naging result ng study na to, Nakikinig na si Bata sa akin. Kasi hindi naman siya mga pwedeng kopyahin yung sagot niya sa ibang kaklase niya. Kailangan niyang makinig sa akin para malaman niya yung step and steps and procedures kung paano isosolve yung isang problem. Kasi kung hindi siya makikinig sa akin, hindi niya masasagot yung individual exercise na ibibigay ko sa kanya. And this action research uh, increased the performance of my students before when I was teaching at Victoria High School. Okay. So, uh, after those uh, those interventions that I have conducted, ito na yung naging resulta. Balikan po natin na yung result ng aming NAT before. In 2012-2013, the result of our national achievement test was 59.85. Then, after conducting those interventions with my students, among future students, ito na yung naging result. Naging increase siya. Hindi lang nasurpasan yung 75% as the national standard, pero in 2013-2014, uh, yung result ng aming national achievement test was 83.26 from 59.7. And ang sarap pala sa sa Juan, pakiramdam na kapag after conducting all those strategies with your students, eto na sila. Eto na yung mga estudyante mo na super uh, successful na in their respective career. And these students in front of you are the students who are the beneficiaries of my action research before. Okay, this is Angelica Ramento, a civil engineer. This is the second picture in the left is Juanito Digan, a civil engineer also, nasa Manila na siya. Itong pangatlo is Ronel Pintero, a civil engineer. Uh, itong, si, itong nasa taas na naka-color blue ng shirt is an agricultural engineer, si Adam Bukahan. And itong dalawa, sila lang yung kwan nakasunod ng yap, yapak ko. Uh, itong si Jordan uh, Rafael and Robert Nolasco, and they are now an educator in the Deaf Ed Schools Division of Pirino. Itong si Jordan, Jordan, uh, itong si Robert Nolasco, itong nakaupo, nakaupo is a top three, uh, top three siya sa let, regional level. Okay, and marami pang iba. Okay, so that is the result when you conduct action research. Kaya itong mga teachers ko natin, Sir Virgo, when they will step their foot in the Department of Education, kailangan nilang gumawa ng research. Kailangan, kasi marami silang may encounter ng mga problems later. And in action research, sabi ko nga, you do action research because you encounter problems and you will be the one to do the solution or the intervention. Okay. Okay, balik po tayo sa aking discussion. Okay, so read, observe, and experience. Okay, eto na. I will share with you the eight M's. Uh, I guess na pakinggan na ito ni Sir Virgo when I was in Rojas. Pero since different naman po yung ating, kwan, yung ating participant, uh, I guess this, this would be of great help whenever we will uh, enter into the Department of Education or pwede rin naman tayong gumawa ng mga action research 
when, even we will be hired in private school muna while waiting for items in the public. Okay, the first M. Okay. Sino yung mga English major dito? Uh, mag Magparisite tayo, Sir Virgo. Okay. May we ask from the CPU, from Central Philippine University, please, to please type in the chat box. Or can we engage uh, Ms. Abelio? Can we call our some of our English um, educator, I mean, education students po? Ms. Joanne? Okay. So we have here CPU K. Okay. Uh, Galing. Uh, nakuha, na niya, na, nakuha na niya yung synonym kung ano yung ibig sabihin ng ano yan, milieu, milieu. It's an environment. So sa environment, pwede ka nang makakuha, makakuha ng topic mo on action research. Okay. Paano kami makakakuha ng, action re, uh, ng topic namin sa action research? Eh, wala nang face-to-face na yun. Pwede pa rin. Okay, example. In SDO Quirino kasi, we have this project, Suluk Talas. A Suluk Talas is a small corner inside inside the, their respective home kung saan magpuput up kami doon ng mga uh, learning area nila. Doon nila i-engage yung kanilang sarili. Before, walang ganun. Gan walang ganun, right? Pero this time, in-encourage namin lahat ng mga learners namin in SDO Quirino to come up with that one. Kasi ang observation namin, when we visited our students, hala, nandun sa lapag lang ng, ng kainan nila yung mga module, nandun sa ibabaw ng mga mesa, hindi siya, hindi siya malinis tignan. Okay, so yun yung, yun yung rationale behind kung bakit siya na-conceptualize yung, yung sulok talas. Or even pagbalik natin sa classroom later, pag mayroon na tayong face-to-face. Example. Uh, or balikan natin yung mga practices natin before. Sa tingin ba natin nakaka-learn or mas engage yung ating mga estudyante kung nakikita nila yung mga performance task result nila doon sa mga bulletin board? Sa tingin nyo, na-encourage silang mag-aral kapag na-i-display yung mga part, yung mga performance task nila doon? Okay, yes, sabi ni Ma'am Denny. Uh, so, pwede rin, pwede, rin pwede rin gawing action research yan if you are going to put those uh, performance tasks na makikita doon sa sa pan natin, sa classroom. Uh, sabi nila, print-rich environment would be of great help in order to improve performance of our learners. Print-rich environment. Pero minsan, may mga educators din na Sobrang linis yung kanilang classroom. Walang mga tseche-boretse doon na nakadisplay. Walang mga bulletin board. Kasi sa tingin nila, mas engaged or mas nakakapag-aral yung mga isudyante nila kung walang mga sagabal, walang distractor sa loob ng classroom. Pwede rin yun. Pwede nating tignan natin later yan. Pwede nating tignan kung effective nga ba yun o hindi. O, pwede rin bang yung pagpalit-palit ng upuan ng ating mga estudyante that is still environment pa rin yan. Pwede bang makatulong yun sa ating mga sa pag, pagtaas ng performance ng ating mga estudyante? Actually, I have a research on that before again. Yung altering yung sitting arrangement ng ating mga alternating the sitting arrangement ng ating mga estudyante, pwede bang makatulong yun sa ating sa performance? Example, si medyo inclined sa mat, ipares mo doon sa medyo mababa. Okay, pagpares-paresin mo. Ah, meron din naman meron din naman akong professor way back when I was in college. Kapag bababa ka, doon ka sa harap. Kapag perfect ang score mo, nandoon ka sa likod. Kaya yung mga susunod sa iyo na klase na mag-groom doon sa room niyo, kung nandun ka sa harap, alam na nila na ikaw yung pinakamababang score. So, nakakahiya, right? Motivation din yun sa isudyante. So, kailangan mong galingan. Para pag sa susunod na mga araw, nandun ka din sa likod para maiba rin yung impression ng mga mga isudyante na nakakakita sa iyo. So, that is environment. Okay, next.
matter. Of course, um, ngayon, we have now this MELC, yung sinasabi po nilang MELC, or your most essential learning competences po natin. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, kinongest po yung ating MELC. Yung first quarter po natin, dinideliver na lang yung most essential learning competences natin ng nine, nine weeks. So, pwede rin po tayong mag, magkuan dyan, mag-focus. Saan sa mga MELC na to ang pwede nating least mastered competencies na pwede nating pagpupusan ng ating action research. Hindi basta-basta kukuha ka ng topic, no? Magkuan ka, mag-scanning mag ka. Kailangan mag-scanning ka kung saan sa mga competencies na yon ang kailangan mong bigyan ng bigyang pansin para at least mapataas mo yung performance ng ating mga sudyante. Sir Virgo, can you excuse me for one muna? Um, three minutes lang. Magpala ako. Sir Paul. Recording stopped. Okay, so for our participants, you could have also, you can take also this chance to have your health break. It's 9.25 in the morning. We will be back at 9.30. So please uh, gather some more strength. I hope you're still okay, Mr. Pavo and the rest of our RPC students. And from CPU, I hope you are still with us. Okay. Uh, sana no, um, marami din tayo nakukuha. So right now, uh, Dr. Villanueva is already discussing the eight M's and we are down to um, the last six. Okay. And he also mentioned about the sources of research. And these are summarized into three things. ROE, when you read, when you observe, and when you experience. Dr. Villanueva also mentioned several non-action researches that he has facilitated when he was still a faculty in the Department of Education in Quirino. We have their action research for enhancing the performance of the students in mathematics, and it was shown clearly what would be the benefit if we would really do right action research because from the students who perform well in the mathematics exam, to professionals. Most of them already are engineers at the moment. And also for English, for a certain peer tutoring, the collaboration among students in the like that would not also address or what would not only address, for example, the academic performance, but also absenteeism. So right now, we hope that you are getting some insights on how you could come up with the several action research topics because sabi ni Dr. Villanueva, marami pong problema at marami pong concern. Dito papasok yung problems transform into opportunities for us to really solve them. And through these um, difficulties or challenges, we rise up with solutions. Tama ba? Sige nga po. May I see a thumbs up from everyone if we're getting something from this uh, engagement. And with that, we'll be right back in a few minutes. Please stick around. Hey, sir, we go okay na? Yes, though. No. Welcome back. Recording in progress. Okay. So we have the third M. So tapos na tayo sa dalawa. We have the uh, milieu, the matter, and the third is the motivation. Okay. Etong mga participants natin, mostly, ilan sila? Uh, mga anong year level na sila, Sir Virgo? Um, most of them, 90% are graduating students po, Doc. That's why they would be already exposed to, uh, some of them are already in the ongoing field study and later on teaching internship po. Isa kasi mga requirement, Doc Villanueva, is um, really coming up with a classroom-based action research po. Yes, actually, even here in Kirino Province at Kirino State University, and in encourage na rin yung kwan, yung mga students namin sa grad, undergrad to come up with action research para mm -hmm. hindi na sila kwan, hindi na sila manibago later when they will proceed right. to the death end. And, pero, are these future educators will have their face to face internship or what? 
Mm. Um, Dr. Villeneuve, right now in the higher education, po, we are now uh, encouraged to facilitate limited face-to-face -face po come second term or the coming year. Pero karamihan po, Dr. Villeneuve, ay uh, ongoing na po yung mga limited face-to-face. -face. So more likely po, especially for the schools na meron po silang basic education sa university, they could already facilitate limited face-to-face -face field study or internship. That's for the Pan-Pacific University. I just don't know po sa um, Central Philippine University. Uh, Ms. Joanne, do we have an update on this po, on the ground? Ms. Abelio? for your field study or ongoing um, teaching internship po, Ma'am Joanne? Ah, so yun. I was not... Wait. Ah, yun. Ah, currently, we are full online, even in our field study. And uh, come second semester, I think we will still be in full online with the uh, teaching internship because our basic ed from kindergarten, elementary to high school, our university is implementing the full online. So I think we will finish. It is just so, um, I don't say it's sad, but at least another skill is being developed with our educators because they are really uh, doing field study and practice teaching in the full online context. So what we do is they observe and they do assistantship with the cooperating teachers in an online platform, a virtual platform. So I think that is a, an additional skill that our teachers are learning because we are still, I think the university is still in the position that they will still hold online classes until everyone gets vaccinated from kindergarten to high school. So that's, I think, the reason why we are still in full online. We hope that by August 2022, we will start the limited face-to-face -face or the blended learning. But since the university is has really a very good online platform, so I think we will still do that. So that is Sir Wilmer. That is our, that is our concern because in the full online uh, field study and teaching internship, how do we determine problems? So the action research component of field study will be done uh, correctly, something like that. Okay, thank you very much, Mom Joanne. Uh, actually, um, even we are doing online class, uh, di ba mag-intern mag yung ating mga estudyante later, ano? and they will observe their cooperating teachers. Uh, in SDO Quirino, we have lots of research na rin wherein this, uh, the, the interventions or the strategies used in their action research were done online. Actually, in one of the districts here in SDO Quirino, the Sagudai district, conducted this uh, VLS or the virtual lesson study wherein this lesson study have uh, a lot lots of interventions wherein students were exposed from it and we found it effective. Kaya um, even, yun nga, sabi ko nga, even online yung gagamitin nating modality, we can still, kwan naman, we can still do action research pa rin. Kaya I'm sharing with you the eight M's para at least magkaroon ng idea, magkaroon ng idea yung ating mga estudyante. Okay. O oh, dito sa motivation, pang third na po natin, sa motivation. Um, di ba kapag, kapag iisa lang yung motivation technique na ginagamit mo sa estudyante, naboboring sila, right? Uh, during the face-to-face -face, or even when we, are, we were students, itong mga, yung mga participants natin, uh, students, nung estudyante pa lang sila, Ano kadalasan yung mga, pwede bang mag-share yung ating mga participant? Ano kadalasan yung mga ginagamit na motivation ng ating mga estudyante? Or, memorize yun na ba yung, kwan, yung motivation na ginagamit ng ating teachers before? Na, pe, na parang nakukuha na tayo na pagpasok pa lang niya sa classroom, alam na natin. Da, kailangan ba na ganun tayo pagdating ng araw, dear students, na mayroon lang tayong isang tatak na kapag bumasok ka doon sa loob ng classroom, eh, ayan na naman si ma'am. 
magpapalabas na naman siya ng one fourth magpapakis. Ayan na naman si ma'am. Magpapakanta lang yan in the morning. Wala namang connection sa lesson. Okay. Or, kayo yung magiging teacher na everyday parang um, aabangan ka ni estudyante kung ano yung gagawin mo sa loob ng classroom. Everyday, yung yung hindi po mapasok na estudyante mo ay papasok kasi meron siyang hinihintay sa iyo nakaka nag, nakamomotivate siya sa iyo Okay so next Sir Virgo, ano na yung kwan yung nag nag sa slide ko? Um, the motivation slide, Doc Wilmar. Wait lang, nawala naman yun. So I think Dr. Wilmar is there. While Dr. Wilmar is fixing the PowerPoint presentation, may we have the students to please comment your answer to Dr. Wilmar's uh, I mean, question about the motivation. What do you think is the right motivation, especially now in the online classes? What motivates you to attend your online class as a student and as, for example, future LPTs? What motivation technique or strategy would be best or applicable to online classes? Siging Apple, do you have one that somehow would show us kung paano po sa online class? Or yung magpapa icon icon lang po ba ganyan or kasi Dr. Wilmer no this time in the time of the online classes once you once you join the Zoom or Google Meet then once um you're there it, it doesn't matter where, whether you you participate or not right kunwari yung iba pa uh, there are photos like moving just to show that you are there but actually physically you're somewhere else so kaya nga, kaya nga minsan, um, Sir Virgo, when mm -hmm. I do meetings or when I do seminar or when I conducted learning and development, nagkukan ako, nagrarandom talaga ako ng tinatawag para doon ko ma-checheck kung talagang nakikinig sila doon sa discussion. Kasi uh, nakakahiya naman doon sa kwan, sa speaker namin. Right. Uh, balang araw, mararanasan nyo rin yan later. Mm -hmm. Doc Wilmar, probably you can do it now for us to check. Yung mga matatawag po na hindi mag-reply mag or mag-respond, walang certificate, Dr. Wilmar. Actually, ganun yung ginagawa ko doon. So, every time, ini-screenshot ko, every five minutes, ini-screenshot ko yung mga nandun. Pero uh, sometimes naman, um, kung din, kinoconsider din natin kasi dito kasi sa Quirino Province, bulubundukin siya, eh mahina ang internet. Right. internet namin. Mm -hmm. Pero po, no? sa atin siguro, yung mga participants natin, mostly nandun sila sa sa urban. Mm -hmm. Kaya malakas yung internet. Okay. okay. So siguro, tanungin natin yung mga estudyante natin, magbalik tayo, magbalik tanaw, magbalik tanaw nga tayo. Nung nag-aaral kayo sa high school, can you please share some of the motivation techniques na ginagamit ng mga teachers nyo kung saan parang na e-encourage kayo mag Dr. Wilmar, Start natin Dr. kay Juan, kay Sir Frederick. Ah, okay po. Mr. Villanueva, go ahead. Ayan, okay na po. <laughs> um, hello po. Um, when I was in high school, um, one of my favorite teacher is my English teacher. Uh, kasi um, parang yung voice na it's modulated and parati niyang ini-incorporate yung kanyang real life um, experiences dun sa lesson na kanyang 
tinuturo. That's why very realistic yung kanyang mga examples at nakaka-relate din kami kasi um, nagtatanong siya kung ano yung mga recent and past experiences namin connecting to the topic that he is discussing. And now this teacher is one of my motivation in pursuing my dreams as a teacher also. And with that, he is now a principal in DepEd. Ayun po. That's why um, gustong gusto, hindi lamang po ako, pati yung iba po naming um, classmates, gustong gusto siya. Okay. Thank you very much, Sir Frederick, for that sharing. Okay. Meron, meron yung mga teachers na ganun, yung parang minamansyahan ka o yung mga motivation techniques niya before and nakaka-encourage para mansyahan ka, para tularan mo siya, right? Meron din akong teacher na ganun before. Okay, may we have next sharer from CPU Ma'am Catherine Aguizo. O oh, yan. Minus one hour sa certificate, Sir Virgo. Next, CPU, Sir Peter Jan Solidarius. Hi, Sir. Uh, good morning. So, in my case, uh, can, can you hear me, Sir? Am I clear? Yes, yes, sir. Go ahead. Thank you. So in my case, during my high school days, our teacher usually uh, lets us, um, especially in English or in science, our teacher us usually lets us uh, write rhymes before class and then adding, you know, uh, songs, uh, adding a rhythm of songs before we start. So it's actually a fun uh uh, fun class uh, during high school. Uh, so that's all. Mm -hmm. What's your major, uh, Mr. You. Peter? Uh, English. And then that's why. All right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Peter. Dr. Villanueva? Okay. Thank you very much, Peter. Uh, I remember one of my co-teachers also uh, way back when I was teacher. Uh, ginagamit niya yung pan, yung word for the day. Pinaplas niya doon sa upper right portion of their blackboard. Then, before the start of the session, mamimili siya ng kwan, mga estudyante niya, nagagamit doon sa word in a sentence. So, maganda rin yun. Maganda rin technique yun. Okay? Okay, maybe we have the last. Uh, Sir Mark June Capistrano. Mark June, B elementary major. I mean, B ed. From PU. Mark Dun. I'm sorry. Uh, please unmute again. Hello, sir. Good morning, po. Go on. Um, sir, um, based on my experience in um when I am um, a high school um students, um kagaya po ng sinabi niyo, sir. Um, yung teacher ko po ng English um ng Filipino um um a uh, major po um yung ginagamit niya pong um pagmotivate sa pagmo-motivate sa amin is yung sinabi niyo pong word of the day um na um, nag uh, may nagtuturo po siya or nagkukan po siya ng mga estudyante to relate that um word sa mga mga bata po yun po sa akin thank you June Dr. Wilmer okay so thank you very much and i hope those sharings na binigay po natin and yung may experiences ng ating mga participants uh, will be of great to later para makapag one, makapag create din sila ng change sa ating sa kanilang mga learners. Okay, next, let's proceed to the next M. The fifth one is yung materials. Okay. May may nakita kong nag-comment kanina ng isang M materials sa Okay. Uh, alam natin na kapag teacher tayo, yung pinaka-lipstick natin, yung pinaka-makeup natin, ay yung mga instructional materials na ginagamit natin sa loob ng classroom. 
hindi pwede yung papasok ka na wala kang daladalang instructional materials na pwedeng pang support doon sa pagintindi ng ating mga learners doon sa lesson. Okay. I remember, again, uh, kasi sa mathematics, eh, marami kang pwedeng gamitin. Okay. Biglang, biglang pumasok yung principal ko noon. Sakto ang topic ko is uh, the graph of a quadratic function. So, yun yung topic ko. Paano ko kaya i-prepare ito? Wala akong kadaladalang I am. Kasi biglaan siyang pumasok. Eh, magda-divert sana ako noon ng kwan ng gagawin. Eh, daladala niya yung lesson plan ko. So, dapat tayong mga teachers, flexible din tayo. Na anytime, pwede tayong makapag-present ng mga materials na pwede natin gamitin doon sa, pag, doon sa pag-present natin ng ating mga lesson. Sakto, during that time, Maraming halaman doon sa loob ng classroom. O kagaya dito sa likod ko, maraming halaman. Actually, yung, yung office na pinag ko ngayon is Office of the Assistant Superintendent na kigamit ako. We define the, the, the graph of a quadratic function as yung parabola, right? Symmetric figure. Ngayon, nakita ko yung halaman doon sa gilid ng classroom. O, meron na akong ginamit na IN. Pero wag niyo akong tularan, dear future educators. Kailangan kapag magturo tayo, prepared tayo sa ating gagamitin materials. Base doon sa present natin sa objectives. Ma'am Joanne, i-check natin yan sa ating mga teachers later, ha? Na kapag even we are, we are doing online later, kailangan prepared na prepared pa rin yung ating mga estudyante doon sa kanilang mga IM. Kasi sabi nga natin, oh, magbasa kayo ulit later, nakakatulong ba ang material doon sa pag-intindi ng ating mga estudyante? O oh, I have this material, pwede ko kayang gamitin ito sa ating action research? Okay. Next. Media. When we say media, ay ito na, pumapasok na dito yung Audio, pwede, pwede yung pumasok na dito ang video. O, minsan, kapag prinisent natin yung isang idea, nag, nagkukan tayo, nag-proceed tayo ng mga audio, yung mga video na nililip natin sa ating, sa mga website, sa mga YouTube para ma-motivate yung ating mga estudyante, right? Para mas nalong maintindihan yung lesson. Okay. Pwede rin, pwede rin sigurong ang gagawin mong action research later, dear educators, kasi ngayon yung engagement ng mga bata sa online class is limited lang. Meron lang siyang limit 4 hours in a day lang. Yun yung pres prescribed ni DepEd na dapat hindi mo i-expose si bata sa masyadong matagal na oras sa online class kasi masisira din yung kanilang mga mata. Kaya yung, yung suggested time is until 4 hours lang. Ngayon, pwede kang gumawa ng video mo or uh, mag-craft ka ng video mo. Tapos, example, ang topic mo is how to solve problems, uh, worded problems involving uh, AIDS problems, something ganun. Medyo mahirap yan sa algebra, right? Ngayon, Mag-video ka, i-video mo yung sarili niyo. Then meron ka din siguro mga GC, ipopost mo doon. Then panonoorin ka, step by step. Sa tingin mo, makakatulong kaya yon doon sa understanding ng, ng mga estudyante mo in solving worded problems involving AIDS. Okay, kung, kung sa tingin nyo, pwede. Okay, pwede mong gawin yung action research. Pwede rin sa audio. Example. Uh, yung mga modules natin, especially sa mga Pilipino, medyo makapal, medyo mahaba. Ngayon, walang cellphone yung mga estudyante na pwedeng paglagyan ng video. Pero meron silang radyo sa bahay. Pwede kang, pwede mong i-record yung sarili mo. Sasabihin o ikwento yung isang maikling kwento sa kanila. Hindi, parang at least merong variation yung pag-aaral nila. Hindi lang binabasa yung Lesson. Pwede rin, ah, ito pala yung teacher namin, two years na, pero hindi pa namin nakikita. Pero at least napakinggan namin ngayon. Meron siyang pinadalang 
voice record ng aming lesson. Okay, so pwede rin yun. Pwede kayang mapa-increase yung performance ng ating mga estudyante. So that is for media. And that includes the audio and the video. Next, measurement. Uh, pag sinabi natin measurement, it, it speaks on Oh, kindly type. Sir Virgo, bigyan natin ng price kung sino yung one maka maka sagot. Mm-hmm. Okay, correct. Right. Sir Openiano. Okay, this is speaks on assessment. Okay. Kailangan, uh, especially ngayong time of COVID-19 in DepEd, we have only two ways of assessing our learners. The first one is the written output or the written works. And the second one is the performance task. Okay. Tinanggal na yung quarterly assessment. Some of our teachers is still, hindi pa rin, hindi pa rin nakaka-migrate doon sa idea na magkaroon ng quarterly assessment. Ini, pinupus pa rin nila. Kaya yung performance task, nandun at nandun pa rin yung parang summative assessment. Pero hindi sana ganun. Kasi, Anong difference ng written works tapos nagpasamative ka doon sa performance task? Parang nagre-written works din sila. Why not think of other alternative assessment para at least ma-engage din yung ating mga estudyante doon sa kanilang lesson? Example, ang lesson mo is uh, quadratic, quadratic equation sa grade 9, ang lesson mo. So paano mo i-integrate ang performance task? Okay. Magpa-drawing ka ngayon ng dream house nila na makikita mo yung mga parabolic figures. O, pwede yon. What else? Ang lesson mo is o, sa science. Kung may lesson mo naman is science o mag-isip ka din ng mga gagawin nila na hindi lang siya written works. Dapat kailangan i-engage din natin yung ating mga estudyante in such manner. Okay. Kagaya rin natin, um, noong sudyante tayo, aminin natin may mga teachers tayong isa lang yung ginagamit nilang assessment strategy or measurement strategy. Pagpasok pa lang niya sa loob ng classroom, alam mo na na one-fourth ang, one ang ipapalabas niya at magpapa-quiz siya ng multiple choice. Pagpasok pa lang niya sa loob ng classroom, alam mong enumeration ang kanyang ipapagawa. So, ikaw naman, magaling kang mag-memorize. Sige, minemorize mo na lahat kaya na perfect mo. Yun na lang yung ginagawa niya. Alam mo na, yan si teacher na enumeration. Yan si teacher na one-fourth at one to ten, right minus wrong. So, alam nyo na yun. Why not? You will be the teacher soon na parang mag-iisip yung mga bata kung ano na, ano na naman kayong papagawa ng teacher? Kailangan ko mag-review kasi hindi mo hindi mo ma-predict kung ano yung gagawin niya. Magpapa-essay ba siya ngayon? Magpapa-enumerate ba siya ngayon? Magpapa-performance task ba siya ngayon? Kinabukasan, uh, magpapa-oral recitation, kinabukasan, iba na naman. So, kay, yung isudyante, mag-aaral, mag-aaral yan. Kasi gumagamit ka ng iba't ibang measurement or assessment tools. Okay, so that is for measurement. And next, mastery. Okay. Ito yung kailangan natin sa DepEd. Huwag kang mag-proceed sa next lesson hanggat hindi mo mamamaster yung present lesson. Kasi yung present lesson is a prerequisite to the next. Alam natin na yung, yung feature ni K-12 ay spiral, right? That topics... Next topic is a prerequisite from the previous topic. So, kailangan mong ipamaster. So, kailangan nating maggawa ng mga interventions para mamaster ng bata yung competency na yun. Okay. So, that is for mastery. And of course, the next is methods. Okay. Ano yung method na gagawin mo dun sa pagtuturo mo dun sa competency na yun? Ano yung strategy na gagamitin mo? Ano yung technique na gagamitin mo? O, kagaya, kagaya sa akin, kailangan magpakita ko ng mga real object para maintindihan ng mga bata, mga estudyante. O, kailangan ko ding 
ilabas yung aking mga insudyante sa community para malaman nila kung ano talaga yung pinag-aaralan. Kailangan mong ilabas yung mga estudyante para at least malaman nila kung ano yung lesson. Okay. Kailangan ka din gumamit ng mga strategies. Other strategies. Okay. Uh, here's now my definition of an action research or when I do these eight things. The students I work with needs positive information, na, positive reinforcement, and positive expectation to achieve positive output. So yun po dapat yung ating mindset kapag maging teacher na po tayo. Kailangan mag, mag put up ka ng positive reinforcement so that yung expectation magiging positive din at later on magiging positive yung ating output. Okay. The beginning point of an action research is you stop, look around. You look, look within and you listen and you look beyond. Okay. Uh, here's now the definition of an action research. An action research is si teacher will examine their own classroom. Ito na yung first M natin. Milieu. Instructional strategies, yan na yung method. Assessment, yan na yung si measurement. Procedures, assessment procedures, yan na si assessment. And interaction with student learners, motivation, in order to improve their quality and effectiveness. Okay. An action research is a research undertaken in order to solve an immediate problem faced by the teacher. So, an action research, meron kang problema, sariling problema, kailangan din ikaw yung magpe-face dyan. Kailangan din ikaw yung mag, mag-so-solve dyan. Hindi, Sir Virgo, meron akong problema, solusyonan mo nga. Paano alam ni Sir Virgo? Hindi nga niya na-experience yung problem. Right? Okay. Ikaw din ang makapag-solve doon. Kagaya ng experience ko before when I was a teacher. Ang baba ng performance ng ng teach ng nat namin, anong gagawin ko? Kailangan ko bang itap si English teacher to help me solve that problem? No, I need the one. I be I will be the one to arrest my problem. Kasi ako yung nakakakita doon sa problem. Ako din yung gagawa ng immediate solution. We have this immediate problem, then here comes your immediate solution to solve that problem. Okay, next. It is a reflective and repeated process of progressive problem solving pursued by group of teachers as members of a community of practitioners whose goal is to improve the way they address issues in classroom teaching and to find appropriate intervention. So pwede ding group of teachers in the same example. They, are, they belong in math, math group. Or they talk with each other. So anong problem mo? Ano kaya kung gagawin natin? Nangyayari ito during your lock session. Uh, lock session sa mga future teachers natin, ito yung ginagamit ng ating mga teachers wherein they sit together, they talk with each other kung ano yung issues and problems doon sa kanilang pagtuturo. They will share best strategies to further solve uh, problems inside their classroom. Okay, next. An action research is a research. It is a variety of methods aimed at investigating and analyzing uh, organi organizational, academic, or instructional problems or weaknesses for the purpose of helping educators develop practical solutions to address them quickly and efficiently. So you don't need to find solution that is one month ka nang one month kang nag-iisip ng solution mo. Tapos na yung problem, wala ka pang ibibigay na solution. Take note, in action research, dapat practical lang siya. That will address your problem quickly and efficiently. Okay, next. Ito naman, galing kay Mertler. It is characterized as research that is done by teacher for themselves. Why? Kasi problem mo yun eh. Kailangan mong gawan din ng solution. So kung hindi mo gagawa ng solution, magiging problema, magiging problema mo pa rin yun. It is a learning from day-to-day -day classroom observation and experiences. Ayan. And at the end of the day, after an eight-hour engagement with your students, 
meron kang mga observe, meron kang may experiences, meron kang mga may experience. And those experiences will guide you to craft interventions and innovations in order to solve problems that you encounter. That day. It requires reflective practice. Okay. Here's my definition of an action research. It is building an epistemic community by improving practices into a better one through intervention programs. It requires passion for positive change through positive perspective as an educator. So, hidden word, dapat maging positive lang tayo. Kung mayroon kang problema ang ma-encounter inside your classroom, take that as, do not take that as a burden. Take that as a motivation for you para ma-improve mo yung sarili mo as an educator. Okay, kagaya ko noon. Huwag mong isipin yan na stress. Dapat kailangan mag-isip ka ng solution doon sa problema mo. At the end of the day, ikaw din, masisiyahan ka din doon sa magiging result. Kagaya, kagaya ng mga ginawa ko dito. Okay. O, ito na. What is the difference? When, where, when can we consider that an action research is an action research and it is not an action research? First, uh, action research is a process that improves education through change. It is a collaborative. It is cyclical. Kasi when you do action research, Matapos man yan, meron at meron ka na namang mapapain out doon sa result. Then later on, ay, mas maganda kaya kung gagawin ko yung intervention ko. Mas i-enhance ko siya. Kasi para mas ma-improve ko pa yung performance ng aking estudyante. Hindi yung nakagawa ka ng research mo, ay tama na, ilagay ko na dito sa aking cabinet yung result. Ha, hihintayin ko na yung assessment for master teacher, magagamit ko na yan. No. Kailangan dapat gawin na natin, nasa system na natin yan. Kasi we are educators, we are destined to do, uh, to solve problems inside the classroom. Yan yung nailatag sa atin na mga, yan yung nailatag sa atin na tungkulin natin aside dun sa mga ililista nila later dun sa ating duties and responsibilities. Okay, it is practical and relevant. It is within the context of teachers' environment. So, sabi ko nga, si Sir Virgo, hindi siya pwedeng gumawa ng action research niya na doon sa aking context. No? Dapat sa context mo, sa sarili mo mismo. Uh, how can we do things better? You explore, discover, seek to find creative solution. Later on, yung mga imagination natin, yung mga creative mind ko natin, lalabas siya. Lalabas later yun. Then, a way to improve instructional practices by observing, revising, and reflecting. Hindi naman natin i-consider na action research what it is not problem solving, doing research on or about people. It is not linear. Sabi ko nga pag nag-end na, mag-end na, no. Kailangan siyang tuloy-tuloy. It is not conclusive. Ay, si ganito. Kaya pala. No. Kung ano yung result mo dito, wag mong sabihin, ah, yung result ng 4A doon sa aking research is ganito. So, all throughout my section, ganyan na rin. No, dapat hindi ka magiging conclusive. Generalizing to a larger population, o, oh, yun din. Why we do certain things, the implementation of predetermined answers, or it is not a fad also. Doing action research is not a fad. Okay? Ito na. And I will be sharing with you now the DepEd Order Number 16, Series 2017. Ito yung pinaka-Biblia na, natin. Natin, sabi ko nga kasi I am, na, I am claiming na, na you will be part of the DepEd soon. Uh, one year to two years from now. Uh, ito na yung magiging kwan natin, template natin for action research. Uh, based from DepEd Order Number 16, Series 2017, or entitled the Research Management Guidelines. First, we have the title. First, the context and rational or rationale. The second is the action research question. The third is the proposed innovations, intervention, and strategy. The fourth is the action research method. Uh, will be your participants? Will be your, uh, what will be your method in gathering your data? What are the ethical issues and the plan for data analysis? 
Then five, action research work plan and timeline. Six is the cost estimate. Seven is the plan for dissemination and utilization. Eight is the reference. So a, a research is... Mas na-prepraise yung research kapag na-disseminate siya at mas na-utilize yung research. Okay. In SDO Quirino, uh, meron kami mga activities wherein we encourage our teachers to disseminate their, the result of their action research. In SDO Quirino, and mas pinadali na namin yung paggawa ng action research kasi templated na yan. Ang gagawin lang ni researcher yung context and rationale and the proposed interventions, innovations. Kasi manggagaling sa kanila yon. Yung action research question, bali meron na yan, given na yan. Uh, depende lang kung one group yung pag-implementan mo or two groups yung pag-implementan mo. Then participant, data gathering, ethical issues plan for data analysis, and even the work plan and timelines, meron na kaming template na ginagamit na. Ito yung gagawin mo sa pre-implementation. Ito yung gagawin mo sa implementation period. Ito yung gagamitin mo sa post-implementation period. Okay. Depende na lang kung yung research will be done in two weeks or in one month or in one quarter. Actually, in action research, you can do that in two weeks up to three months or one quarter. Kasi yung pinakalis mas yung list competencies natin is two weeks. Pwede kang makagawa ng intervention doon. Okay. Then cost estimate and plan for data analysis. Plan for dissemination and utilization. Medyo ang kinak kinakabahan minsan yung ating mga researcher yung plan for data analysis natin. Um, plan for data analysis kasi especially yung mga hindi hindi forte niya ang math. Anong gagamitin kung plan for data analysis? Okay. Madali lang yan. Kung ano yung research question mo, dun mo lang din ibabase yung data analysis mo sa action research. Mabilis-mabilis lang din gagawin. Okay. Um, Sir Virgo, can, ex can you please excuse me for another five minutes? Again. Sure. Yes. All right. So, I'm sorry. While waiting for Dr. Wilmar, um, can we uh, type in the chat box what we are learning so far or the takeaways up to this moment? Come on, everyone. We would love to read them. So, so far, any reflections, any thoughts worth remembering from the sharing of Dr. Wilmar? And we would be reading them. It would be best if each school from Pan Pacific, from CPU, and I've seen also schools coming from Mindanao, if I'm not mistaken, can, let me just proceed with. Okay, we have from UM Digos, Mr. Tomas de Cueto. And yeah, we have also from, yeah, UM and UC. Um, we would like also to acknowledge Miss Eva from Pan Pacific University. Hello, Miss Eva. Thank you for joining. So come on, any worth remembering or takeaway so far? Okay, Jen. Jana Palangdao said, UC graduate, DepEd applicant research is... Uh, siguro hindi pa kompleto. Miss Jen. Oh, uh, UC from Baguio, University of the Cordilleras. A fellow UCN here, including... Um, yeah, I'm <laughs> from UC as well. Sige po. Uh, the eight M's coming from Gav Balfin. All right. Dr. Wilmar, uh, may we go back to you. Um, otherwise, um, we will continue reading. Mr. Rico said how to make a good action uh, for a while. Action research. Um, Solidario said be positive when doing action research. Oh, um, sana no, talaga namang positibo. Hindi lang yung poro, sige na, gagawin ko na lang din. Ganyan. Pero sa dulo, <laughs> hindi mo rin nagawa. <laughs> hindi mo. Um, well, this is just a sharing because we handle also research. Mr. Villanueva knows about this. Like, Title pa lang, hindi ba? Paduguan na. So how much more if you proceed to the next? But anyway, I think um, Miss Joan and Dr. Wilmar will also agree with me. I don't know if the others. Ang pinakamahirap po talaga is yung hanapin po yung problema. What's really the problem? What's, what's its context? Because more often than not, uh, madali na lang po kasi kapag meron na yung ating foundation. Like, what do you really want to study? What do you really want to solve? What do you really want to achieve? Once this context is really finalized, 
or identify, the other parts will already be um, easier. However, ang mahirap po, ayaw mo na nga ng, res- ng action research, wala ka pang um, anchor or yung, yung specification of what you want really to study. Uh, we have other answers here. Eight M's on how things are done and achieved. Uh, in this webinar, a student pan Pacific always think positive, all right? Um, there's one theme now, be positive or optimistic. Templates of action research is be- very much helpful, right? Kasi mas madali na lang pong gumawa kapag may susundan kang template. Pero ang tanong, kahit may template, wala ka namang may sulat, o oh, di wala din. So it should go hand in hand, all right? Um, I think that's it. May we hear from the participant? Okay, any volunteer to... Um, what about the preliminary or ideas that you have in mind? Like that one parallel to Dr. Villeneuve's topics last time or a while ago shared to us. Ano na yung inyong nakikita or iniisip na pag-aaralan? Oh, let's begin with the idea. What are the common problems? Identified one concern rather or issue in online education that you want to solve. Come on. I think one is authentic online assessment. Are they really authentic? For example, uh, in PE, uh, Mr. Villanueva knows about this, like when you, when you conduct dances or let's say swimming classes. So do you think the mere writing, for example, of the process would be enough to assess whether the students learn the concepts and so on? Mr. Rico said how to get the full attention of the students. Is this online? Uh, may we hear from you, Mr. Rico, please unmute. And quickly, can you contextualize your, your thought on this uh, part or in this concern as a probable action research topic? Mr. Rico? And Mr. Villanueva as well. Another Villanueva, oh, diba? Mr. J.R. Villanueva, our CBRC vice. Uh, our technical support right now is also social studies student. Uh, he said it is more on relevant and good basis in action. Go ahead, Rico. Ah uh, yes, sir. Nowadays, especially we are um having this mode of learning. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. Yeah, nowadays, especially um with the mode of learning that we have, um there is a need for us to really cut the attention of of the students because um based on my observation. There are really students who are just joining without being interactive at the same time. In having said that, we should create um, or we should have this um, idea on the materials that we are using in order for them to have a better understanding and in order for us to redirect their attention to what we are teaching. And just like what has been mentioned earlier, materials um, are also important in um, our mode of learning now, uh, which is online. Right. And Mr. Rico, as a student who has a first-hand experience when it comes to this kind of online classes engagement, what do you think is the solution that we could study or that we could explore to be probable solution to this concern? Can you specify Um, one um, solution to this? For me, um, one of the solutions that we can provide is um, uh, with this type of learning, with mm-hmm. the mode of learning that we have, which is online, one of the solution is that for us to, um, to give proper motivation to our students, just like... Um, and interactive activities from time to time in order for us to have a good engagement during classes. Mm-hmm, right. Uh, in relation to that, this is though in the classroom base, just, just to share quickly if Dr. Wilmar is not yet with us. Dr. Wilmar, just give us a heads up if you're ready, ready for the resumption of the talk. Uh, when I was still in a, in, as a classroom teacher in Baguio City in a private school, um, just to share Rico and the rest of our participants, gumagamit ako ng popsicle sticks na may iba't ibang kulay I don't know if you have also done that. It's like, so it's elementary, but actually I found out that even if you are already in high school or even in the graduate school, by the way, it was my thesis, um, you long for motivation in all forms, kahit na pakendi, for example, or anything, so long that your, your performance or your sharing would be, would be appraised. So from then on, every time na sumasagot yung mga studyante, 
I give corresponding number of popsicle sticks. Now, if it is knowledge-based, for example, capital of the Philippines is Manila, just one popsicle stick. But if you elaborate on your responses, you would ha have to gather more popsicle sticks. And at the end, you would, you would be counting, you would be counting the number of popsicle sticks. And then in the popsicle sticks, there are words. For example, you did a great job. Your response was, uh, you know, um, uh, worth taking or noteworthy, for example. So that's one. And another thing that I could also share is the lesson study. I don't know if you've heard about it, anyone from the, from the body. Lesson study is a form of teaching and learning process that originated in Japan. So unlike when you teach, right, it is um, teacher-based. For example, everything would be given by the teacher, everything would be done by the teacher, everything would be checked by the teacher. It's teacher-based. But the lesson study is more collaborative. So you allow the students to participate in the teaching and learning process. So as you go on from the topic to the activities, the students are fully engaged and they actually participate beyond uh, somehow the direct of the teacher. So they could um, give more, they could uh, answer more, they could uh, collaborate more. And it, it was found out that lesson study is best when it comes to specific content uh, topics like math, science, and English. So this could also be, um, these are all results of action research, right? So merong batayan yung ating mga ginagawa, hindi lang sa gusto mo. Thank you, Mr. Rico. Anything to add? Um, yeah, I actually had this during my um, elementary days. We're in, um, once you have a great performance, every class says, in a week, you'll be posted or you'll be in bulletin board like um, a pupil of the week. So mm -hmm. I guess this is also one, um, one way to appreciate students and at the same time, uh, motivate them. Now, parang sasabi nila na one day na makikita din ako ng ibang students na nandyan. It's like mm. that. Thank you. Right. right. Thank you, Mr. Rico. And I think it is where you have to back up as well your proposed solutions with theories and concepts. I think it's one of the competencies that the student must also learn. I think Mr. Villanueva is already here. Dr. Wilmar, may we have you back. Okay. Thank you very much, Sir Virgo. Sorry for the pan, ano? And kasi in, kapag December na kasi sa DepEd, um, paubusan na ng fund yan, tapos um, patapusan ng mga activities. Actually, I am conducting four-in-one activities this morning, pero malapit sa puso ko ang CBRC at Maestra Journal, kaya hindi ko, hindi ko hinindihan. Nandun naman na yung mga kasama ko. Uh, I, am, I have a training for mathematics teachers, for senior high school teachers, for lesson study, yung binanggit mo kanina. And yung supervisor namin dati sa ESP or values education, um, pumano na kasi siya nung kwan, pinahawak sa akin yung subject area na yun. Kaya four in one yung training na binaman tayo ko. Pero I mas, syempre, mas mahal ko pa rin yung CBRC. Kaya nandito ako. Pero minsan, um, five minutes, three minutes lang naman yung hinihingi ko na kwan para check, check, check ko lang naman yung, uh, yung mga participants ko. Okay. Uh, actually, Sir Virgo, I'd like to share that in SDO Pirino, uh, napakakwan, napakayaman ko ng lesson study namin dito. Uh, late, lately lang, in this December, nagpresent po sila sa WALS, sa WALS, sa Amerika. And our researchers, um, actually, grino, grino up na rin namin yung pan namin, yung, yung lesson study namin. Hindi na lang siya sa math and science, pero in-include na rin namin siya sa, kwan, sa English, wherein napakalaki ng suporta ng um, um, provincial government, they invested talaga dito. At nakikita namin yung impact na ginagawa ng amin mga teachers. And in this lesson study, maraming mga interventions na ginagawa yung aming mga teachers. Okay, so balik po tayo. Uh, nandyan pa ba yung screen ko, Sir Virgo? Yes, but we are seeing the slide on characteristics of a good research title. Okay, so... Wait lang. Hindi naman ako makakabalik doon sa...
Dr. Wilmer, probably you could just reshare both the screen. That would be better. Okay, okay na? Yes, yes daw. Okay. So what are the characteristics of a good research title? First, the dependent variable and the independent variables should be in the title. Ibig sabihin, the intervention and the expected outcome should be placed in the title. Second, indicate accurately the subject and scope of the study. Okay, so for, say, for example, mathematics, English, science, ilagay po natin doon. And of course, yung scope niya, who are the beneficiaries of this action research, the grade 9 students of Pan Pacific University. Something ganon. Use acronyms is allowed to catch the attention of the reader. An acronym is considered as one word in cases where grade level is placed use Hindu-Arabic numbers. Example, grade, nine, grade 5 or grade 9. Something. Uh, kagaya ng nilagay ko kanina doon, try o So that is an acronym for Teach Rhythmetic in One-on-One -on -one Approach, uh, Project Voice. Uh, marami, marami na rin tayo. Pwede rin natin gamitin yung mga pangalan natin, yung mga acronym ng mga pangalan natin para later maitatag na yung intervention sa'yo. Ah, ito si... Si Sir BL Approach, si Sir Virgo Lopez Approach, something ganon. So BL Approach. Okay, next. Use words that promote positive connotation. Avoid the words lack. Or avoid the word lack. Use of ma words, maximum of 15 words, excluding the function words. So dapat 15 words lang yung gagamitin natin sa title para hindi siya masyado mahaba. In case of qualitative research, use declarative question form for the title. The title format in SDO Quirino, we use the all capital letter, not bold, not under. So, yan po yung ginagamit po namin. Okay. Example. Oh, we have here example. Example research title. Under method. Varied teaching approaches and academic performance of grade 9 students in Araling Palipunan. So yung technique po natin ng paggawa ng title, dapat meron siyang uh, IV and DV, yung independent and dependent variables. So in this title, uh, where is our dependent and independent variable? Okay, may we have participants to answer my question? Oh, nung nag-aaral nag po tayo ng science, oh, di ba meron tayong independent and dependent? Oh, Nagpa-experiment si teacher. Nagpatanim siya ng seed. Okay. Kailangan mo siyang magbigyan ng water o bigyan ng tamang sunlight para tumubo yung yung kwan yung halaman saan doon ang independent variable or nag-experiment kayo ito si halaman A ito si halaman B si halaman A hindi ko siya didiligan ilalagay ko siya sa loob ng kwarto ko si halaman B didiligan ko siya ilalagay ko siya doon sa masisinagan ng araw after 5 days nakita mo yung epekto Okay. Sino sa kanila ang mas maganda ang kalalabasan? Siyempre, yung nadiligan at saka yung nabigyan ng tamang sikat ng araw. Saan doon ang independent variable? Sir Ray? Is this Sir Ray Ann or Ma'am Ray Ann wrong na mo? Uh, Ma'am po. Uh, Ma'am Ray Ann. Good morning po. Good morning. Um, for me po, yung, yung independent po sa kanila is yung ano po. Um, yung hindi po, um, hindi po naarawan. Okay, hindi po naarawan. Okay, tama ba yun, Sir J.R.? Yung A po. 
Okay, meron din, meron na naman akong kamag-anak dito, Sir Virgo. This is the pleasure of one. Uh, inviting, na-invite pala sa mga webinar, makakakilala ka ng mga kamag-anak. Sir JR, okay. tama ba yung sinabi ni Ma'am Ray Ann? Yes, sir. Oh, yes. How about Sir Pavo Nico? At natahimik po sila, Dr. Wilmar. <laughs> Tahimik sila. Uh, hindi natin alam, baka nandun sila sa Robinson. Ma'am Tracy Ann Ables. Wala. Hello, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. So for me, sir, the independent variable is... Uh, sunlight and the sunlight that the plant is in at syempre yung ano sir yung pagbilig tapos yung dependent variable are the plants sir okay tama so yung dependent vari independent variable po natin is yung amount of sunlight and amount of water na dinilig natin dun sa halaman at yung dependent variable is yung tatanggap dun sa independent so ganun, ganun din po dito sa ating action research So dito, meron tayong tinatawag na independent, yun yung i-implement natin na intervention. So, varied teaching approaches. So yan lang yung title. Ngayon, kung ikaw yung magbabasa, title pa lang, ano kayo yung varied teaching approaches? So mag magkaka-interest yung magbabasa. Mag magkakaroon ng interest yung magbabasa kung ano yung kabuuan ng topic. Ganun dapat yung yung notion natin or yung mindset natin kung gagawa tayo ng mga action research. Dapat, sa title pa lang, mabibighani mo na yung magbabasa. So, ah, kailangan kong basahin ito. Ano kayong sinasabi niyang varied teaching approaches? Yun pala, cooperative learning, games, and ICT-based materials pala yung sinasabi. And itong uh, nasulat ng letter color blue, yung academic performance of grade ng students na naroling panlipunan is your dependent variable. And that speaks on the first, yung isang M po natin yung method. Okay, next, motivation. Contributory factors of teachers' motivation in Filipino and academic performance of grade 9 students of Quirino General High School. So ano kayo yung mga contributory factors? Oh, that is, again, an intervention. Yun pala, yung isang salita, isang araw, at sa katala salitaan. Yun pala yung ibig sabihin nun. So, naka-hide yun, pero kung babasahin mo yung title, para magkaka-interest ka. Okay, next. That is for motivation. Uh, next, under media and methods, ICT-based activities and the performance of grade 4 Maharlika in adding the similar fraction. The previous example is general siya. Araling Panlipunan and uh, Pilipino. Pero dito, nagkuan siya. Specific yung kanyang competencies na ina-address. Yung adding dissimilar fraction. Kasi uh, dito sa adding dissimilar fraction, nakapaloob doon sa context and rationale niya siguro na dito, based on his observation or her observation, mababa ang performance sa mga estudyante along these competencies. Kaya yan yung kanyang topic na gustong Bigyan ng research. Okay, next. Varied, varied assessment tools and study habits in Hekasi of grade 5 Magalang in the Poon Central School. So, um, gusto niyang improve yung study habits ng kanyang estudyante sa Hekasi, kaya magkakaroon siya ng varied assessment tools. So, yun yung kanyang strategies o yun yung kanyang intervention. Next. Oh, this one. Matulungan dalawahan and improve performance in mathematics of grade 6 pupils of Angadanan East Central School. Uh, matulungan dalawahan is the term yung ginagamit natin. Ito yung, uh, ito yung kwan. Pair, think pair, share, something ganon. Yung, pero kinontextualize niya ito kasi math teacher yung yung researcher dito, ginamit niya yung word na mat kasi mat teacher siya. So, mat tulungan dalawahan is actually yung pair, pair share approach yan. Pero, pinangalanan lang yan ng mat tulungan dalawahan. Okay, next. 
Uh, PC tandem and improve performance in mathematics of grade 6 pupils of Durok Integrated School. Uh, ito na yung kasagutan ng, ng isang tanong kanina ni Ma'am Joanne. Kung pwede ba nating i, i, kwan, i, incorporate pa rin ang action research even we are in the online class or even we are in the midst of pandemic. Uh, itong PC tandem, uh, hindi siya measurement, it's an environment. Pwede environment yan. PC stands for personal computer. No, it is a parent-child tandem. O pwedeng magbigay ka ng mga activities, dapat ito ay gagawin ni parent and child doon sa kanilang bahay. Doon mo makikita ngayon na merong, merong collaboration between these two. Okay, pwede rin, paano namin gagawin sa eh, Paano natin paano namin gagawin? Oh, example walang online class. Pupunta si teacher, ah, pupunta si parent doon sa doon sa school kukunin yung mga module. So identified na yung mga medyo mahirap na parte na hindi maintindihan ni bata. So ang gagawin mo, pwede rin siguro magkaroon ka ng isang innovation ulit na magkakaroon ka ng 30 minute talk with parent. O i-discuss mo na kung ano yung mga dapat i-discuss doon sa module. Tapos later on, babalik si parent doon sa bahay, siya nang magdi-discuss sa kanyang mga sa kanyang anak. Okay, so that is now, titignan mo ngayon yung effect ni PC tandem para ma-improve yung kanilang mathematics performance. So that is for uh, another intervention. Okay. Sir Virgo, pwede na ba tayong mag 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 workshop? Yes, Yeah, go ahead po daw. Okay. Stop sharing ko muna. Mag-stop sharing ko muna. I-share ko lang yung yung other parts ng slide ko kanina. Sige po. Para ma ma-encourage okay. natin yung ating mga teachers. Doc Wilmar, pa-check na lang po yung direct message ko. Thank you. Okay. Wait lang. saan sa dito dito din sa Zoom. Yes, but anyway, Doc will go ahead. We'll just message you PM niyo na lang po later. Okay, sige. And uh, sige sige. Okay. Uh, I'll just show you yung additional slides ko then later on. Punta na tayo, punta na tayo doon sa workshop proper para ready na sila for tomorrow. Sorry na po. Okay. Share ko lang, i-share ko lang yung additional part ng slide ko na ginamit ko din before in Rojas. Ayun. And yung tanong kanina ni ni Sir Virgo kung may pera ba sa research, tama may pera po. Yun nga sabi ko sa inyo kanina, if your research will be qualified, Uh, bibigyan po yan ng kaukulang pondo ng Basic Education Research Fund. Uh, in, actually, in SDO Quirino, nag-start po kami mabigyan ng pondo noong 2015. 20, 2015, 15 po ng mga teachers namin ang nabigyan ng pondo. 30,000 each to 40,000 yung mga nakuha nila para, pang, para gamitin nila to implement their respective research. In 2016, we have 22 birth 2017, naging 27, 2018, naging 65, and 2019, naging 90. So, increasing po yung number of research na. And yung mga hindi, na, hindi nakukuha sa BERF, pinagpapatuloy pa rin naman nila yung kanilang mga research kasi uh, magagamit pa rin naman nila yan during assessment. So, yun, yun nga yung sinasabi ko yung... yung project B, itong Project B star namin, which started way back in 2019, boomed its number from 40 in 2015 to 400 in 2019. Okay, so here are the fruits of our labor. Three of our delegates in the Regional Basic Education Research Conference 5.0 held on November 24 to 27, 2019 at Ross Isabela. Ito yung venue natin noon, Sir Virgo, sa Rojas. 
garnered major awards. Actually, itong the girl na nasa middle is um, Elaine Gonzalez. Ito yung kinekwento ko sa inyo na nanalo doon sa research presentation ng Maestra Journal way back. Kailan ba to Sir Virgo? 2020. Uh, 2020. Yes, last year pa. 2020. Nag-third place sila. Uh, and this and the rest are recipient of the um, birth. Yung birth po natin. Okay. I think sinasabi ko, kailangan, if you if you are done with your research, hindi lang, hindi lang pwedeng nandun lang sa cabinet. Kailangan mo rin siyang i-disimine. In SDO Quirino, we have this richer or the Research and Innovation Conference and Honoring of Exceptional Researchers. Actually, it is now on its fifth version this year. Okay. Then, we invited also speakers. Uh, yung nag, nagtatano, nagsasalita dito is si Ma'am Robles. Kilala din ni Sir Virgo yan. Nag-comment din doon sa post ni Maestro Diana. Okay. Then, ito, some of our pictures. Okay. We have also that startup ceremony. Uh, the one wearing striped shirt is Dr. Samuel Sullivan, the Director for of Bureau of Curriculum Division in DepEd Central Office. Dati namin siyang uh, Assistant Schools Division Superintendent. Okay. Okay. Ito yung mga teachers namin na uh, recipient ng mobile training namin ng Action Research Senior High School wherein we harvested as uh, 70 researchers from research from the senior high school level. Okay. Then, go back tayo doon sa ating Okay. Okay, for our activity now, ito na yung magiging start-up natin para doon sa kwan. Paggawa natin ng, pag-determine natin ng mga problems po natin. And what are the common problems you've encountered in your classroom? Write your answers on the metacards or on your sheet of paper. Write at least three. Okay, three minutes. Uh, which of these problem needs at most urgency? So, kailangan mag-identify ka ng tatlo Then, based sa tatlo, kailangan mong identify yung most urgent. Yun yung magiging focus natin later ng ating gagawing research. Okay. How to start an action research? Of course, we have this problem sensing chart. Uh, meron kang problem sa gitna. After we identify the three, you identify the most urgent, ilalagay mo dyan sa problem. Okay. Then, ano kaya yung magiging direct causes ng problem na yan? And what will be your direct consequence? Sir Virgo, this will be, your, this will be the, the activity that to be undertaken by our participants. Ano? Mm -hmm. Okay. Example, mag-example tayo. My problem is, I have this student's low performance on basic operations involving fraction. Okay. What are the direct consequences? Lack of understanding on concept of LDM, LCD, GCF, insufficient knowledge in the step-by-step -step process. Okay, what is now the direct consequences? Of course, they will have wrong answers, wrong answers during application, and of course, failure sa subject in math. So, kailangan ba nating hayaan na ganyan yung mangyari? Of course not. We need to do solution. We need to address the solution. Ah, we need to address the problem. So, fill in the chart now. Five minutes. Pero that will be given. Gagawin natin later. Okay. Kung na na identify natin yung problem, it's time for us to immediately solve that problem by thinking of an alternative or intervention that will address the problem. This will now be your template activity. What is your objective? Now that the problem is identified together with the causes and consequences, what is now your objective? Okay. 
your direct causes will be your intervention and your direct consequences, you will be able to attain your objective. What will be its consequences? Or if you will be able to attain your objective, what will be its consequences? Okay, let's give an example. I want to improve the student's ability in basic operation involving fraction. So what is now my direct process or ano yung magiging direct process kaya para ma-improve ko yung student's ability? Oh, okay, I will utilize strategic intervention materials. Okay, ito ay, anong M ito? Oh, Siyempre, nandun na si M, material. So, ano yung magiging direct consequences when I use this intervention? Of course, improve performance of students on basic operations involving fraction. Okay, so yan po ngayon yung gagawin. Okay, so Sir Virgo, I think we have these three activities to be done by our students, mm -hmm. to be performed by our students. First, they will identify three major problems. Based from these three club problems, they will identify the most urgent. Then yung urgent na yun, yun yung gagawin na nila dun sa problem sensing. And sa problem sensing, gagawa na rin sila ng kanilang uh, objective. Then, think of a solution to address that problem. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, they should accomplish it po within the day or for good for tomorrow na, Doc Wellman? So, uh, depende na sa inyo, sir, kung pwede, natin, pwede na natin ipakon sa kanila, ipa, mm -mm. ipa take home mm -mm. para gawin, natin, gawin na nila sa kanilang mga bahay para bukas, tig-isa, tig-isa yeah. na kuhan na represent may... ng, kanilang, <laughs> ng kanilang output. Para matulungan na rin natin sila kung paano nila i-craft yung kanilang title. At mm -hmm. least meron nang identify na mga problems. And Dr. Wilmar, siguro pwede na rin sigur lang ilagay nila din sa PowerPoint nila so that they could present from their end. Okay, yes. Yes, oo. Yeah. Otherwise, if you cannot come up with your PowerPoint presentation, then the word file that could be shared as well would do. Okay. Uh, may, may we call on Miss Joan quickly, po. Miss Joan, uh, do you plan to have it per individually from your end, or ano po ang doable sa atin, Miss Joan? Um, is Miss Joan still here? But for the PU uh, on our part, um, the the first year students, because Dr. Wilmar pinatend ko narin po yung mga first year, second year ko. But those who would be um, exposed for field study for second term, the third year. Please do it individually, all right? Otherwise, you may... Nakita ko yung mga taga-CPU sa mga individual. Okay. Uh, you could work with a pair. All right. Or, yeah, uh, a peer. Kasi Dr. Wilmer, meron naman yung peer, no? So, siguro, maximum of two students po in one problem. Siguro yung magkakasama na lang, like English, math, uh, depending on your course. That's for the PU students attending now for the, those who would be exposed to field study and teaching internship. But for the uh, CPU, we'll wait for Miss Joan. Miss Joan, if you're here. Okay. Sige po. Dr. Wilmar, any other instructions for the activity po? Okay, so ganun na lang siguro, Sir Virgo. Uh, we will have... Uh... We will give luxury of time for our students to craft the given template para ma-identify nila yung problem nila. Then tomorrow, they will discuss with us para mabigyan po natin ng PA and assistance na rin to, mm -hmm. for the completion of yung proposal nila. Okay. And, and doc again, the activity, hindi ko na as strange. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Doc uh, Wilmar, uh, just for the information po coming from Ms. Opiniano, I mean, was it Ms. Opiniano? No, Habunete, they were grouped. Uh, may we see, uh, was this thumbs up from all CPU students if you confirm that you are already grouped for this activity? Come on, everyone. All right, good. So work with your respective group as uh, you were already, uh, I mean, directed to do so. Okay, so I'll be flashing now the template. So this is how we are going to do. The first template is the problem sensing chart. Okay, so here is an example. Okay, na, na screenshot na po natin. Okay, then ito na yung ating activity template. 
Then after that, after identifying the problem, we proceed to the ob objective sensing chart. Okay. Uh, here is an example. Okay. Tapos na tayo mag-screenshot. Okay. Then, ito yung ating activity. Okay. Then tomorrow, Sir Virgo, maybe we can give uh, five minutes in every presenter. Five mm -hmm. minutes for every presenter, then um, the rest. Uh, ten minutes per presenter, five minutes will be for presentation, and five minutes will be for critique. Dun sa presentation, they will not go directly on dun, dun sa kwan, dun sa pag-represent. Kailangan mag-kwan din sila. Mag-intro din sila kung ano yung experiences nila about that one. Kasi doon sa problem, nilagay lang naman briefly yon Pero kailangan malaman natin yung real scenario na kami lang naman. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Wilmer, probably, uh, do, we, do you still have slides to show po for some concepts? Or can we take this chance po for probably context questions for them to be guided or properly for their activity due tomorrow po? For the wala audience? na, wala na. Okay, sige po. Um, can you accommodate, let's say, five to ten minutes of uh, Q&A po? Sige. Just to, okay. So may we ask everyone to please turn your respective cameras now for us to have an engagement. Please feel free to express yourself some points or clarifications from the, or about the activity given to you by Dr. Wilmar. Um, wag tayong matakot, no? Kasi ito yung pagkakataon na uh, marunong but please stay, still stay muted if you are not yet about to ask something. You may raise your virtual hand for some questions. Uh, habang naghihintay po tayo, Dr. Wilmar, siguro uh, clarification lang. So more likely, um, kailangan talaga meron sila nung, nung problems and then the prioritized problems. And may rationaliz rationalization siguro po yun, no? Na bakit ito yung priority nila and uh, bakit yung least priority. And uh, dapat related po sa kanilang course. Like pag elementary po sila, uh, B ed, B ed problems. Tama po, Dr. Yes. Tuman. Okay. Alright. And then, pwede po siguro dun sa may mga sensing parts po, uh, kailangan pong uh, phrase or pwede pong bullets? Um, mas maganda siguro na phrase siya. Yeah. Okay, phrase. Or, uh, sentences, especially kung language students okay. pa sila Dr. Wilmar. Kasi apart from yung problema po o concern natin sa action research, isa din pong talagang mahirap gawin is yung mag-formulate po ng isusulat, hindi po ba? May, okay. may Ay, idea? Actually, doon sa context and rationale, mm -hmm. um, di ba sabi ko nga, based on your readings, observation, and experience. Okay. When you craft your context and rationale, make it simple. Not that parang gagawa ka ng thesis. Actually, uh, a proposal, an action research proposal can be from 8 to 10 pages lang sa, sa DepEd. That is a requirement. Hindi siya pakapalan. And the simpler dun sa pag-present mo ng context and rationale, the better. We will use the inverted pyramid just like when you do uh, news from general to specific. Specific means yung yung kwan mo na, yung konteksto mo na, yung scenario, scenario ng problema, dun mo na ilalagay. Then the last part of your, uh, can I just show one sample na lang? Yes, Doc. It would be better po para may guide pa sila. Uh, and while waiting po, no, well, please keep your questions coming. You may type in the chat box so that Dr. Wilmer could respond uh, as early as now. Otherwise, hold your peace forever as they say. Okay. Um, Mr. Muskera, if, if I may ask, do you have already a probable topic from your group, Mr. John? Uh, um, hello. Yes, you are being heard loud and clear. So we are still um, analyzing po ano po yung pwedeng mga topic namin because um, in, a, in our group, we, ha we are three members. Mm -hmm. And then we have different, like, but similar, different but similar um, analyzation about the um, problems and difficulties that we encountered during our um, pitching. So we are still um, analyzing what is the main title or the topic that we need to. 
Yes, thank you. Dr. Wilmer, kailangan may title na po ba sila? But not necessarily, right? Ms. Dr. Uh, not necessary, pero maganda na rin na based on their problem, maka- maka- capture na natin doon yung gagawin nyo lang pa. Apo. Um, Dr. Wilmer, before, uh, while you are still looking for the sharing po, um, I have typed po, uh, courtesy of our um, Center for Lifelong Learning uh, officer, Ms. Jury, who is here. Good, good morning, ma'am. Please join the Facebook Close group. Nandun po yung link sa chat box. Please join us early as now so that we could come up with a community of, of action researchers. And I think Mr. Dr. Wilmar will be invited to join so that we could exchange. It will become a collegial uh, community uh, so that we could also attend. Like Eventually then, para ma-improve yung paper ninyo. And for updates, for action research, and so on, beyond this webinar, then we utilize this for communication and collaboration purposes. So please join now, everyone. Uh, please, ayan. It's uh, groups, and then it's here. It's there. Once you're, you're done, please um, have a heart sign like that. Okay. Thank you. And we are making an announcement. You cannot or you will not be receiving your certificate of participation if you would not accomplish the tasks given and you cannot present tomorrow. All right. So, um, of course, Thank this you, is... Uh, sorry, my, my brown out. Okay. Just just the data. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Joan, um, we just would like to confirm uh, the students from CPU would be working in, in three members for the activity. Yes. Before. Yes. Uh-uh. Uh, just for the advisors to have a, uh, ano, um, counting leeway lang in reading papers. You know, it's hard to read a lot of papers in a given in a short time. So we decided for them to help each other muna because this is a learning experience. We decided they will be working in groups of three, so one topic lang sila. So I hope they. I hope they can contribute fairly to the paper. <laughs> Sige po. Sige po. All right. Dr. Wilmar, last na lang po announce mo. Sige, yung mga taga-PU po, Pan-Pacific, just work with your course. So kapag BPED, isang grupo, elementary, isang grupo. But in secondary, different. Okay? English group, social studies group, and so on. Okay po? All right. So PU students, thumbs up if that's clear. So you will not be working individually. You work per specialization or per course. Thank you. Dr. Wilmar, uh, please take it away. Okay. Ah, ito na yung sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina. Yung how we are going to to craft the context and rationale. Sabi ko nga, inverted pyramid yung mostly na ginagamit natin. Uh, this is an action research by a teacher from Pinaripad National High School uh, in the person of Jim Luke Lacar. Yung, ta- yung title niya is Look Tactic. Why Look? Oh. Siyempre, ma- makukuan ka. Gusto kong basahin to ah. Galing sa pangalan niya. Ano kayo yung look tactic niya? Okay. Contextualize strategic intervention material. Okay. Dito, so, lagay niya dito sa first paragraph, paragraph niya about the role of a teacher, of a mathematics teacher. Then, naglagay na rin siya ng mga kwandyaan, ng mga literature related to um, instructional materials. Okay. Ipa- gusto ko lang sabihin sa inyo dito yung pagpasok niya nung kanyang situation. Uh, where is it? Uh, ito. Dito sa part na to, pinasok niya yung one of the most affected learning areas of this unexpected word di- dilemma, COVID-19, is mathematics. It has been considered through the years that delivery of the subject, even before, is difficult and this was a term in the low performance of students in the achievement test. So, kinuha niya yung performance sa division level. Then, pumasok na siya ngayon dito sa kanyang, sa kanyang konteksto. Dito o, oh, sa, sa kanyang konteksto, uh, two out of ten students or 20% manifested proficiency in numeracy while the rest lack knowledge and skills especially in solving real problems. So, dito pa lang, makikita mo na kailangan mong bigyan tuon ito. Kasi 2 out of 10, mababa yun. 20% lang ang nagpapakita ng proficient. Dapat yung pag, pag naglagay tayo ng ating mga uh, dun sa context and rationale natin, dapat data-driven siya. Meron kang basehan na data. 
para masabi natin or para ma-justify natin na kailangan mo talagang mag-research. Then, the last portion will now give you your the way para uh, ito na yung rason kung bakit ko gagawin yung aking intervention. Kaya prinopropose ko ngayon yung aking intervention na look at it. O, so, dyan pa lang, an, nakahang pa lang siya, nakahang. Ibig sabihin, kailangan ako kung kung nakahang yung 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 idea, kailangan kung itul ituloy yung ating babasahin. Siyempre magkaka-interest ako. So ganyan yung dapat gagawin natin later, na dapat ihang muna natin, wag nating ibigay agad-agad doon sa context ng rationale kung anong ibig sabihin ng ating intervention. So yun Sir Virgo. Okay, thank you so much uh, Dr. Wilmar. Anything else? Uh, please feel free to ask questions now regarding your activity. So let me just repeat, no? So you have to come up with the problems and prioritize them. Utilize the problem sensing chart. Uh, anyway, we will be posting the chart uh, later on doon sa group, FB group natin. And then come up also with objective sensing chart. If And if you could already uh, have your, no, not have, but you should really have your draft or working title for your action research. Siguro, Dr. Wilmar, doon sa context and rationale, ma ma maganda talaga dapat na may mabasa muna sila before they actually write. Because if you don't read anything, what would you be writing, right? That's why I, I keep on saying to our research students, you read before you could write. And you oh. write to read as well. And Tama. yung outline, siguro, no, Dr. Wilmar and Ms. Joan, yung pag-outline ang mahalaga. Kasi minsan kapag nagsulat ang mga estudyante, they feel like basta pag marami, maganda yung word or yung statement, copy-paste and everything is there. So para siyang halo-halo. Dapat connected yung mga sinasabi natin. Sabi ko nga, dapat um, when we do this research, your action research should be based talaga on your readings, on your mm -hmm. observation and based from your experience. Para may papalabas natin talaga yung, yung tamang senaryo, yung konteksto ng pag-aaral na. And if I may also add, yung outline is really helpful because you will be guided kung ano yung hahanapin mo at babasahin mo. No? So if you know na the outline, and it's, it should be a practice na when you write a research paper, for every part of the paper, you should know how to write the outline. Kasi importante yung coherence at saka igagaid kayo kung ano ang i-research nyo. Kasi yung nangyayari kasi ngayon, <clears throat> They have the topic, hala, research lang ng research, tas copy-paste, copy-paste. Hindi nila alam yung direction. No, um, before, when I was teaching research, I would require them to have a matrix. Right. Matrix, nag-matrix ako, kaya lang not teaching research anymore. So I'm requiring the students to do matrix in terms of their int introduction para yung referencing, correct din. Uh -oh. So if you have a table or, or matrix, no, Let's say introduction, you wanted to have a general statement about, let's say, um, reading, for example, reading and literacy. So, saan mo kinuha yun? So, may matrix ka na dun. Para pag nagsulat ka na, you, you, ano, you refer to that matrix. The flow of the discussion is may reference ka, tapos yung referencing mo tama na din. I hope that helps. No? Right. Kasi for me, as a, I, as one, I, I, well, I'm not really into a lot of researches, but um, I did several. And that trick helped me, no? even sa literature review. I agree with Ma'am Joan. And uh, just to add po siguro, Dr. Wilmar and Ms. Joan, yung gap, yung, I don't know, in the full-blown research, kasi may research gap, yun yung sinasabi kanina ni Dr. Wilmar na dapat data-driven. So you really have to convince, not not to convince, but to present that uh, the, the action research is really necessary at kailangan talagang uh, magawa. Kaya yung sabi ni Dr. Wilmar na data-driven, uh, numbers do not lie, right? Uh, definitely, if numbers are there, especially if it comes from the data from the division office, or even from your 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 classes, uh, it cannot be contested, right? So you have to really um, put um, these ones, the data data that are necessary. Um, Dr. Wilmar, may tanong lang po dito. Um, uh, what would be the context daw po of the research problem? Where will it be anchored on? Or siguro ang tanong po dito, saan sila kukuha? Maliban siguro sa read, sa observe, and doon po sa experience kanina, specifically, uh, what topics should they should they work on, Paul? Hallelujah, yeah. 
Uh, I think doon lang talaga iikot yung context and rationale ng ating mga researchers. Kasi mm-hmm. kung hindi galing doon, mahirapan sila eh. Right. Mm-hmm. Right po. Okay, come on. Uh, any other question po coming from our students? And I think tomorrow, Dr. Wilmar, Ms. Joan could also join us for the mentoring and critiquing part. Um, just to add, sa CPU part, they are all in field study too now. And they are all assigned a cooperating teacher in a particular class. So, yung contextualization for CPU is... You're muted, but... Sorry. Sa, sa, sa contextualization sa CPU is they are currently field study one. They were observing classes. No, and then um, they were observing classes, and then I already um, told them to find possible problems and possible solutions. Kung how how are they going to um, incorporate that no sa action research nila? So for CPU students, I'm sure there's a running problem and solution in their minds now. That's why we. Uh, invited you to discuss, help us process um, this ano no, kasi I'm sure may, iba meron na eh. I hope 90% of the group, CPU group has. So, yung processing na lang I appreciate the title, the how to formulate a good title, no, because that will help them also formulate and craft a title na the DV and the IV and the specifics should be there. So, that I think we will narrow down to a very good problem solution python no, so i hope that helps no especially the students because i know they're confused on how to do it no but now na narrow down na sa specific so i hope it will be easier thank you mr so tomorrow po talagang cpu would be the first one no they would really be the one to to what's this uh, pr- present so yung mga taga pan pacific just prepare, all right? Pag natapos yung mga taga PU, it's your turn. I mean, say PU, it would be your turn. So, Miss Joanne, um, may we have the number po? How many groups would be presenting tomorrow? Uh, roughly po. Okay, um, Miss Joanne is still checking the list. But then, uh, Dr. Wilmar, uh, kakayanin naman siguro natin yun from 8.30 to 12 at most. Okay. Yan. Sige po. Um, and then from UM po, may, from Digos College, uh, for the other schools po na hindi wawala pa po kasi ang CPU po talaga is already ready, um, you just identify the problems that yung nabanggit po ni Dr. Wilmar, but for the, uh, the CPU students, if you go beyond what is required of you, that would be better po para ma-check na rin ni Dr. Wilmar tomorrow. And of course, suggest accordingly for improvement. Ms. John, do we have uh, the number now? Po? Ah, okay, all right. Okay, any more question? Um, that's it, Ms. Uh, UM, UM uh, participants. Just identify three problems and prioritize and then go on with the tables, the, the problem sensing chart and the objective sensing chart that was presented by Dr. Villanueva earlier. Any other question? It's 11.02 in the, in the morning, um, around 20 groups. Okay, 20 groups. So I think, uh, Dr. Villanueva, kaya po? Sige, okay lang. 8.30 to 12 naman dyan. Yes. Uh, I remember, nakita ko yung logo ni Ma'am Joan sa, sa upper left niya. Yeah. I was there at Iloilo way back when he ate when I attended the National Planning Conference. Ayun. Ang ganda Ayun, ng Iloilo. <laughs> Mas maganda ngay- pa ngayon. Kasi Kumusta na kayo dyan, ma'am? Develop. Ah, uh, so far in terms of COVID, uh, parang four days na daw na zero cases in the hospital. So praise wow. God. Thank so, sana Lord. So sana na siya. <laughs> Ang Alam kwan, ko, for um, three hospitals nag-report ng zero cases for the last four yeah. days ata. So we're mm-hmm. hoping na everyone should be vaccinated. <laughs> may hilo ka, ka kasi dun sa kanta sa palengke nila sa Iloilo. Ang lawak. Di ba, doon yung, kwan ma, malapit kayo sa Gimaras. Yes, the Ilo, province, uh, yes. the both provinces are just uh, about a 15-minute boat ride away. Yes, ma'am. Oo. Balik ka, sir. <laughs> Pag matapos na si Pandemi. CPU. Uh-uh. 
Tama po ako, Dr. Wilmar. Tara. <laughs> okay. So I think there are mo no more questions. So we're ready for tomorrow. We'll begin with the 20 groups from CPU. The other students, participants would still have to join and then watch and learn from the engagement. And then uh, to end, Dr. Wilmer, anything else before we Wala end na. formally for day one? All right. So I think let's give Dr. Sure. Wilmer a... Uh, Dr. Virgo, I'll just add. So um, I suggest that the CPU, you know, um, we allotted uh, four hours until 12. So you might want to meet together with your group from 11 to 12 and brainstorm your presentations for tomorrow. No, And then I'm sure if they have questions, sir, they can just ask in the group Facebook group. Yes, yeah. Right. So so everyone can also uh, see the questions because it's also a question that the other members or groups are also um, needs to be clarified. No? So it's easier pag collaborative. <clears throat> and then one again, and then also lastly, this is not something that you will be you will fear. Parang this is not na something na tatakot yung mga bata. I don't know where the fear is coming from. It's probably because they don't have the expertise, no? But please take this as a learning experience. And when we say learning experience, wala pong mali. No, we are here to help and encourage you to become better teachers. No, I always dream of a country where our Department of Education are or brilliant teachers because I myself has children as a child who I wanted to have um, very good teachers. So let this be an opportunity for us to learn. So wala pong mali. No, we are here to mentor. And um, uh, we our, our ang dream ko personally is all of the, the action researches will be published. No, It will be a very good opportunity for... Kasi nagkakaboost yun ng, ano, eh, ng pagiging teacher na your works are published, no? in a prestigious journals, no, like Maestra or whichever. No. But thank you again, Sir Wilmer and Sir Dr. Lopez and Dr. Villanueva for this wonderful opportunity of collaboration and uh, learning um, activity for, our, for all of us. Thank you. Welcome. And uh, Dr. Wilmer and Ms. Joanne, we commit from the Maestra on behalf of the editorial staff and our board of reviewers if whatever would be the, the per presentation of the CPU students tomorrow, we, we commit to be having a was this research congress for our students this time, because lastly, mga professional po, but this time we would have a research congress for students for their action research. And really, we would allot space for the best action research outputs um, as soon as you finish this year. Wow, so that's a motivation already. Maganda yan, maganda. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Uh, research colloquium. Yeah, right po. And then we would award the, the top three among the, all the outputs po during that congress or colloquium po. So uh, right now, uh, to end formally, please uh, accomplish. It's data-driven. This is research, so it's about right for us to know also how we serve you today for day one and so that we could improve tomorrow. Ms. Jury will now um, have the evaluation form for this event so that we could um, you know, improve our services tomorrow and for the seminars to come. And uh, right now, for your attendance, uh, please turn your camera and we would like to request from Sir JR of CBRC Vice to have the virtual photo op for for your for the documentation purposes. Okay, smile everyone. You may document from your end as well. Okay, all smile first panel because we have five. Ready? Smile. Smile po, wait lang po. Okay. In three, two, one. All right. Once again. Again. And one, two, three. Okay. Smile lang po kayo dahil niyo po alam po anong panel po kayo. Ayan. Third panel. And Para then... Kumulang mag-off mag ng camera. Please. One, two, three. And three, two, one. Okay po. Alright. Um, last thought na lang po siguro, Miss um, Joanne. A while ago, I, I heard yung fear. Um, in nursing po kasi talaga, they say, the fear of the unknown is the real cause. That's why opportunities like this for your awareness to be increased and for you to be informed lessen that fear. So as we go on from every activity of research, doon mas nababawasan yung ating anxiety and our fear. Dr. Villanueva, last words, please, for today. Okay. Uh, thank you very much once again, Sir Virgo and Mang Joanne, for this uh, rare opportunity 
mas maganda sana kung lumipad ako diyan sa Iloilo para nakapasyal ulit ako. And um, second, congratulations in advance to our participants, our students. I hope um, mas magaling kayo, mas magaling kayo. Makikita natin ang galing niyo bukas. Um, and Dr. Wilmar, may mga maiiyak ba sa presentation bukas? Dapat Wala ba silang na. matakot po? <laughs> hindi, hindi. And actually, yung gagawin natin, igagayad natin sila. Baka wow. later, hanap-hanapin nila si Sir Virgo, si, si Ma'am Joanne, at saka si Sir Wilmar after. Oo. At hindi po tayo mga terror po na panel members. No? Kasi ganun kasi talaga kinakatakutan ng mga estudyante. So don't you worry. We will be your mentors and collaborators for the completion of our accent research. On that note, thank you so much everyone. Stay safe and we will be seeing you virtually again tomorrow. Um, good Bye-bye. morning. Hello, everyone. Bye. Thank you, Paul.